Yeah, come here. Yeah. A troll car neco hook. Yeah, boy. For, you, for those of you watching on F FS1, it's a good Sunday morning. Pretty out here on Lake Gunnersville. It's a nice fish. Big post spawn largemouth out here on these Lake Gunnersville ledges. We're on the Tennessee River system. It's May, it's getting hot, and these big largemouth like this are just getting out deep. Fishing about 20 feet of water along these channel markings here. That's awesome. It's flat oh, yeah. calm today, so I had to slow down and pick up a finesse rig here. What a setup, Chris Zaldane on Championship Sunday. One of 10 anglers out there who have worked, who strive so hard in uh, less than perfect conditions, changing conditions, uh, a hard time of year, but on this incredible place, Lake Gunnersville, we salute each and every one of them. Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zona, and there's our incredible playing field for just tremendous for half a century. Exactly right, taking a look at your Minn Kota Unlock the Lake. And Chris Zaldane is really the only, the only survivor here on Championship Sunday to be fishing offshore. If you want to see shallow water fishing, today is for you. And we're going to dial in all the areas, the exact areas, these anglers that have made the top 10 have caught them this week. That is your Minn Kota Unlock the Lake. Uh, what a great setup. These these quality anglers, these top tier guys going on one of the most iconic lakes in the world for bass fishing. Uh, welcome to uh, Bassmaster Live. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studios sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders here with Mark Zona. And Z, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, elephant in the room is the fact that one of our anglers has pretty much got about a lap and a half ahead. He gets a head start against the rest of the field. No matter, everybody's going to be swinging for the fence today. Everyone is thinking Mission Impossible question mark. Maybe, maybe not. Well, t Tommy, it's been a good old fashioned Wisconsin horse whipping <laughs> the entire week from Caleb Kufal. And, and, and look, is it, it, it is it probable that he's going to blow this? No. Is it possible? There's a chance. There is a chance. You're saying the reason why I say that we talked about it yesterday in all of the hundreds of tournaments that we've called together. There was one event in Florida right. that an angler on the final day lost a 10 pound lead. Greg Hackney said he referenced that tournament on stage yesterday. So there, there is a chance. There is Maybe. a chance. All right, we're looking at the chances today. We've got a chance of great coverage today, including our two associates here, Such and Ronnie. Mike Sukon, what do you got for us early this morning? Oh, I said it on Facebook Live. 33-3 is the number I'm looking at. That's what it would take Caleb Kufal to get to 100 oh. pounds to get his century belt. He said he had a nervous, uh, was going to have a nervous night sleeping. You think, don't blow it, don't blow it. I think he's going to be closer to the 33 than the blowing it. All right. I think at some point today we're going to see him kind of actually take a breath and exhale, whether it's three fish in the boat, whether it's five for 13, 14 pounds, whatever it is. But Kufal, he's kind of still a little tight, got one in the boat, and we obviously will see him relax a little bit today and kind of soak in the accomplishment that he's doing this week. Well, he may be a little tight this morning, but he has made it look easy. I'm sure it has not been easy for Caleb Kufal, but uh, man, oh man, doing exactly what he needs to do and starting this day with 11 and a half pound lead. Uh, you can't do much better than that, Mark Jonah. No, and really, it's been a two-prong approach. Fishing a little cove that we got to see a few years ago in 2019 with Matt Heron. Little cove right around the corner from our takeoff. And, and yesterday, it was a, a little bit of a grinder on his starting spot of what he called a 100-foot stretch of milfoil. Been all alternating between a Zoom Z Hog and making a transition yesterday in that mill foil to going to a one ounce dirty jig soft plastic trailer. Caught four nice bass out of that mill foil and it kind of just died out till about 10 30 when he goes to his secondary area, punching thicker mats up near the BB Comer Bridge. And really, right here is where Kufal did all of his damage later in the day yesterday. And it really came in about a 30-minute flurry up shallow. And look, there was two giant stringers caught there yesterday. Caleb Kufal, Wes Logan, getting it done, punching very, very clear water. And we didn't see that bite transpire on day two. And the reason why, he said, man, I was just too noisy. Yeah, I was on my trolling motor. Those fish knew I was there. When it cal calmed down yesterday is when Kufal absolutely blasted him. 
Here's our hummingbird bird's eye view of where Caleb Kufal sits right now in his starting place for all of these days right now. He, does, he indicated he wouldn't spend a whole lot of time here today, Mark Zona, but uh, hey, plans change. Things can happen. Now, you're right. A beautiful hummingbird bird's eye view of all that lush, mm. crisp milfoil. And Davey Height, Dave Mercer talked about it. And Tommy, we talked about it at length yesterday. Kufal just outfished. He just put a beat down mm -hmm. on some great anglers within sight of some great anglers this week. A flawless performance in areas of the lake that are very, very well known. Caleb Kufal, Bassmaster Live, Hummingbird Birds. Uh, And just for some context, he put an incredible weight for this time of year on the scales on day number one, 27 plus pounds, which has certainly been a huge component of the great position he enjoys right now. Two biggest stringers of the tournament, correct, Such, Ron? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes they won he has. Three. They, too, he barely made it over half of that. And the vibe, it's funny, this time yesterday, Mark Zona, we were saying, gosh, we almost feel sorry for Caleb. We sure would be cool if he could catch a fish, you know, and just kind of save face here <laughs> on day number three. He has notched one catch already today. This guy's been out fishing an hour. Yeah, one just keeper in the boat for Kufal. Again, he caught four in this area yesterday. And it was really, he had two flurries. One in the morning on day three, one about three quarters way through his semifinal Saturday. Where's one? Oh yeah. Make a move right now. Pick up the third year elite angler from South Carolina, Brandon Cobb. This was earlier today. We'll show you him getting to work early. Exactly right, right there. across the way from our takeoff. Hey, Been catching him on a frog. Are you swimming at me? Zoom I can't fluke tell. stick all week long. I'm not a keeper. Maybe. Oh, one ate it out of the grass when I snatched it. I popped it in the grass. <laughs> Not a bad one. <laughs> Not big. Not very big, but I believe he's another keeper. Maybe, he's really fat and short. He does. Three fish toward a limit, out live now with Brandon Cobb. Yeah, this morning is uh, kind of doing the same thing I have been the last <clears throat> two days anyway. The first day I was struggling and I just saw some brim beds up here, so I decided to just go run it. I, could, I wasn't really catching them good in practice. And I slowed down a lot with wacky zoom fluke stick. And uh, figured out I can catch a few, but fishing painfully slow, sitting way back. It's like once you see them or get close, I, I can't hardly get them to bite. I'm just sitting back. I started this specific area of brim beds here. I've caught a lot of my fish. I've weighed off of it. I really don't think, I didn't think there was any left, to be honest with you, and then pulled up this morning and caught three. So a few came back. I don't know if there's any big ones or not, but I'm just going to fish here a little while, try to catch a couple more, and then... If I have any real chance of moving up much today, probably have to go find some new stuff. But wanted to get a good start on somewhere I knew there was a few fish. So caught two short ones and three keepers already. And I caught 20 off this thing yesterday and then 20 the day before and just kind of figured there's none left. So a few, a few swim back up overnight, I guess. But it's painful, slow, and I can't see good yet. So I have to fish even slower. Once I can see, I can actually throw at the light spots and stuff. But in the mornings like this, I have to just kind of try to drag the edge of the grass in the holes. It's not my style of fishing, though. We're going to 
We'll take it right now to the man starting the day in second place. Wes Logan started uh, the last time the elites were here with the lead on the final day. And of course, Wes Logan, a lot of momentum coming off his win at the most recent elite event on Neely Henry here in the state of Alabama. Yeah, Wes Logan knew he had a lot of work to do, a lot of catching up. Caleb Kufal earlier today with Wes Logan. Been flipping sparse grass, a little Friendly bit of roof. rim bed fishing mixed in there, but then punching mats up the near the BB Comer Bridge later in the day, like Kufal. Now live with Wes Logan. Uh, pretty slow morning, considering how the other mornings have gone. Um, started where the shad spawn was kind of happening yesterday, and there's no shad and there's no bass. So probably going to put a flipping stick in my hand and do it all day. I got a couple little brim beds I'm going to go check that I saw some fish on yesterday. It's going to bounce back and forth from doing that and flipping. I think flipping is the way to catch the biggest bag possible, but I also want to be able to catch enough to, you know, not fall in the standings either. Basically, fixing to be a two-rod gig the rest of the rest of the day. Got two, a two or a two and a two and a half. First two bites I've had. Well, we're gonna milk this stretch for a while. Go look at a couple brim beds. And then go fish another little area. I caught two big ones in late in the day yesterday. I'm holding back today. You got to catch every big one you can possibly get close to. Once Logan knows that. Chris Aldane knows that. He's worked very hard to make it into this top 10 after. Some shaky points during the course of this tournament. Yeah, and really, this is earlier today. Chris Aldane's bite offshore has gotten better <sighs> as this tournament has went along. The warmer That's a spot. the water has got a lot of more, lot more fish getting offshore in this tournament. Chris Aldane, again, your only, oh, really your only survivor oh, fishing deeper on Lake Gunnersville. Just had a slow day one. Come here. Yeah, come here. Yeah. A little car Neko hook. Yeah, boy. For you, for those of you watching F FS1, it's a good Sunday morning. Pretty out here on Lake Gunnersville. It's a nice fish. Big post spawn largemouth out here on these Lake Gunnersville ledges. We're on the Tennessee River system. It's May, it's getting hot, and these big largemouth like this are just getting out deep. Fishing about 20 feet of water along these channel markings here. That's awesome. It's flat calm today, so I had to slow down and pick up a finesse rig here. Well, as we say, you can't do much better setup than that right there for the best in the business. Working over Lake Gunnersville, basically with nothing to lose, you've got to catch him. You've got to put together a perfect storm of a day today. If you want to have a shot at catching our leader, that's the story. We'll be back with more right after this. Yes. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. All important fourth day of four days of fishing at the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville. This is Championship Sunday. That means we have 10 and 10 only anglers who have made it, who have survived all the way through, nine of them chasing our leader. And hats off to our leader for just a magnificent performance out there. With our leader is our cohort, Davey Hyde, out there. And it is seemingly quiet, seemingly effortless by Caleb Kufal. But I know he's been grinding pretty hard. And uh, he's feeling a little bit of pressure today, is he not, Davey, despite the huge lead? Well, he, he has to be feeling some pressure, Tommy, because, you know, he's got his chance and a great chance to leaving the dot this morning with an 11-pound lead to win his first Bassmaster Elite Series. But, but, boy, if you didn't know it, you wouldn't know it 
because Caleb Kukal, he acts like he's uh, been here a hundred times, uh, qualified through the Opens in 2019, four events in the Central Opens, won one, finished second in one, so he's had some success at the Open level, but definitely has his best chance to raise the blue trophy over his head here today. And he's he's just keeping it simple, and it, it seems like that's what why he's so calm, because he said, I've got two areas, I'm going to flip a jig, I'm going to flip a, a zoom Z crawl, and that's what I'm going to do. And I can't blame him because he has, you know, the 27 pounds the first day was super impressive. And you thought, well, you know, maybe he can hold on to that. But then to back it up with 21 pounds on day two, 23 pounds on day three, very, very impressive. The weather change, I think, has helped him. The, his second area has gotten better now that the, the wind has calmed down. So we'll just have to see what today gives him. Davey, we've seen some beatdowns throughout the years on the Fast Master Elite Series, but it's very rare to see a runaway, a complete runaway when an angler is fishing around other anglers, kind of doing the same thing. The only one that came to mind yesterday is the beatdown that we saw in Lake Katawachi in the Bass Master Classic years ago with Van Dam, where he just stomped everybody around him. Can you recall any other tournament where an angler ran away even though he was around other competitors? No, I really can't, Z, and I've thought about it a lot. And, and and the thing is, you know, this is like Guntersville, and there's, a, you know, almost 100 anglers in that classic. You had a limited field, a much smaller field. These are great anglers. There are no secrets on Guntersville. Nobody thought so, but he yes. has done a great job, and he's just flat out outfished the other anglers for three days. Why do you think that is? Well, just just a lot of confidence. And here's here's one thing that really stood out oh, to me when I talked to him yesterday. And, and he's telling the truth. Oftentimes we don't believe it, but he just didn't have a very good practice. He only had two areas yes. he had any confidence in. Didn't catch any big fish in practice. So sometimes not running around. We heard some of the anglers say, "Man, I, I burned." You know, 40 Get gallons of, there, of gas buddy. on day one. He's got two areas, two baits, and he's stuck yes. with it, and it's worked out perfectly for him. Boom. Yes. Davey, Woo. it's possible, isn't it, to, to admire a, a, a singular performance, a magnificent performance, and hope for the best for somebody, and at the same time, root for someone else to have just that, that brilliant day that makes it close. I mean, makes it, makes it exciting. It's, it's, you can do both those things, right? Yeah, yeah, Tommy, I was talking to Ashley this morning. I was saying, you know, I would love to see Caleb Kufal win this event, but it wouldn't hurt my feelings at all if he waits a little later in the day to catch 20 pounds because, you know, I think big things could happen offshore. A lot of the anglers have been thinking that, and most of them are not here fishing because they spent so much time offshore, but I think there is a big stringer to be caught offshore today. Davey, I'm actually going to call you out. I set the volleyball up for you. One of those tournaments where it was a good old fashioned beatdown was a tournament you won on Lake Pickwick years ago <laughs> around other anglers. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Z. I really do. But, but I mean, really, what he has done here, uh, you know, overshadows that. You know, that was so long ago. Not many people remember it, other than me, you, and Tommy, because we were all right there when it happened. But, but I'm just, I'm really impressed. I spent a lot of time yesterday afternoon after the weigh-in with Caleb Kufal in his boat. And, and man, he just does what he does. You know, he's kind of like a Greg Hackney, a, a, a Jason Christie, and, and. You know, he's doing it to perfection, but he's he's just not making it complicated. He's going and doing what he's doing. He said, I was more nervous the first morning of this event than I am now because I was very concerned that I couldn't even catch a limit, wouldn't make the very first cut, let alone have an 11-pound lead. And, you know, I've watched him close. This is no fluke. He is very, very good at what he's doing. The way he's pitching, the way I see him follow his bait down on control slack, the what he does to try to trigger those strikes. I mean, he is very good at what he's doing right now. And and that's what he does. And, and to be to be able to win, you have to do that. You can't try to go do 10 things and, you know, not feel comfortable doing eight of them. He's just keeping it simple. And, and, and man, it is very impressive because, you know, Matt Hare and Corey Johnson, I mean, Wes Logan, he's fishing around people that are very good at what they do, and he's just beat them. I mean, there's no other way to put it. For three days, he's beat them down. Davey, thank you. Good stuff. Way to size up our uh, overwhelming favorite to take it all today. But again, 
anything can happen. We never discount the possibility of crazy things happening, especially on Championship Sunday. We'll have it all for you today on Bassmaster Live. Looking forward to about seven hours worth of coverage. Starts over on FS1, Fox Sports 1 at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Also on the Fox Sports app, we'll have some supplemental coverage. Also right here on Bassmaster.com, heading toward the weigh-in at 3 p.m. today on Bassmaster.com as well. So a big, big day on a big, big time lake, Lake Gunnersville. All over the world knows exactly what you're talking about. It's on everyone's bucket list. Been on our list this week on the Bassmaster Elite Series. We're in the final day of four days of competition. Nine anglers trying to run down a guy with a huge lead. They'll be swinging for the fences. Oh, by the way, our leader, Caleb Kufal, will be swinging for the fences yeah. as well. I love Guntersville. watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Take a look at this early this morning. Chris Saldane fishing offshore. Worked hard to make it into this top 10. It has not been easy for any of these great anglers, these yeah. top tier anglers. A troll car neck go hook. Yeah, boy. For, you, for those of you watching F FS1, it's a good Sunday morning. Pretty out here on Lake Gunnersville. A nice fish. Big post spawn largemouth out here on these Lake Gunnersville ledges. We're on the Tennessee River system. It's May, it's getting hot, and these big largemouth like this are just getting out deep. Fishing about 20 feet of water along these channel markings here. That's awesome. It's flat calm today, so I had to slow down and pick up a finesse rig here. What a place, Mark Zona, this is the place. I mean, the most, maybe iconic bass fishing lake in this entire part of the country. Absolutely, not only in this entire part of the country, really in the entire United States. Lake Gunnersville, one of the most popular destinations for bass fishing. And that being said, whenever you come to Gunnersville, you had better bring your A game. So much history here. Some of the biggest victories in the history of the Bassmaster Elite Series looking at about 75 miles of playing field. And really, the story of this tournament, it has been in utter beatdown throughout the week. Caleb Kufal, look at that, an 11 and a half pound lead to start his day. It's been cut into a little bit as we fish on into about an hour and a quarter into the fishing for this eight hours of fishing that we will enjoy today on Bassmaster Live. Again, nine anglers with basically nothing to lose. They're gonna throw everything they've got to try to find the five biggest fish they can possibly round up and maybe challenge Caleb Kufal. It's possible to enjoy both a, a superb effort, a superlative one-of-a-kind effort, and root for someone to make it close. It's a little bit. Exactly, and it's so rare to go into a championship Sunday, the anglers that are no, following Caleb top. Kufal, trying to track him down, right. the other nine That's anglers, it. so rare to listen to them say, I do not know what to do yes. to catch up to this man right here. A flawless, flawless day three performance. And here's the thing, yes. it is not Get like Caleb there, Kufal buddy. has found some magic spot. If you're watching this here on FS1, yes. he hasn't found some honey hole Ooh. that nobody else in the tournament found. Yes. He has just Ooh. beat down the competition around him all tournament long. Huge day one, 27 plus pounds. That's a big, big part. His total picture here and kind of fell off that production, barely half that much the next day. And everyone thought, well, he's he may be done for, but he turned it around, as you say, on day number three. Yes. Exactly, a monster day three stringer, over 23 pounds. The two biggest stringers in this event, Day one by Caleb Kufal, day three by Caleb Kufal, and he is just right around the corner from our takeoff here at Goose Pond Landing, right outside of Scottsboro, Alabama. Out to Caleb Kufal live.
Got a couple of smaller ones in the boat so far today. He was basically limited to small fish in his starting spot yesterday, Mark Zona. Yeah, he started out with four fish all the way up until, call it about 10.30 yesterday, flipping a lot of soft plastics. He made a little transition yesterday morning going to a one-ounce jig, getting a couple quality bites earlier yesterday. Where's one? Now, mind you, that little 100-foot sweet spot, all that milfoil vegetation, oh, see a miss right there from Kufal earlier today. Going to take a look at a hummingbird bird's eye view of all that vegetation. Kufal's concentrating on little lanes, little highways, little light spots in that milfoil. And that spot within a spot where you see his boat right there, he put on a show for so many of the best shallow water anglers on the Bassmaster Elite Series. As Caleb Kufal said, it is not a big area where I'm catching them, really only about a 100-foot stretch. Caleb Kufal still sort of biding his time. He's going to spend this a, a prescribed amount of time in this spot today before he goes to his secondary spot. It paid off so big for him yesterday. Among the nine trying to put pressure on him. A good start actually today for Wes Logan. He's got a couple of keepers in the boat, nothing large, but uh, you got to start somewhere. This man coming off with a lot of momentum from the last stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series. He won it right here in Alabama on Lake Neely Henry. This is earlier today. Yeah, and Wes Logan, one of the anglers after the weigh-in yesterday, he said, all we really zero. can do is hope that Caleb Kufal somehow stumbles on Championship Sunday. A couple solid fish for Wes Logan earlier today, but a lot, a lot of his damage also later in the day where he actually has been fishing around Caleb Kufal. Boy, that is a fantastic shot oh, of all boy. that vegetation. It's going to be a slow day, folks. You got to hit them at the right time somewhere. Wes Logan, who actually led this tournament starting on the final day when the Elite Series was here last year in 2020. But man, what he did two weeks ago from Lake Needley Henry, the Coosa River was amazing. Put a lot of pressure on himself on his home lake here and got the job done in fine fashion. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. And really, it was a shaky tournament for Wes Logan. Lost a lot of quality fish where he said he could have won this event by 10 to 15 pounds, possibly. Consistency throughout the week, though, with his weights, and very, very similar to this event. Wes Logan just outfished a lot of anglers fishing the exact same areas. Only a second year on the Bassmaster Elite Series, but this young angler brings a lot of emotion to it, a lot of focus and intensity. Big time win at home for Wes Logan. And momentum is something. Carrying it from one over one tournament over to the next is something we have seen a lot of here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. We'll have our eye on him today. Ron Moore? Well, I wanted to bring it into the Bassmaster Studios, sponsored by Marathon, real quick to just give a little bit of an explanation about the grass at Lake Gunnersville. When people say, hey, I'm fishing grass or I'm fishing wood, we basically know what they mean. Most lakes just have one type of grass that they can key in on. Well, at Gunnersville, there's basically three or four types of grass these anglers can explore. And when we take a visual look at what it would look like in the boat, looking down at the water, you can see what milfoil looks like. It grows up in those stalks and clumps. And what it does is there's 
a lot of different holes. And so when these anglers are fishing and they're pitching their soft plastic baits or their jigs, they're pitching around these clumps of milfoil and the fish are sitting on the edges of them, certain key places. And obviously they will relocate when the sun has different angles, when it's straight above them versus when it's lower light conditions. But then we talk about another grass structure that we've seen anglers fishing and that's eelgrass. It grows in long, long stretches. It grows out a little bit deeper than most other grass and fish have to get on the edges of it or above it and you see them moving uh, moving baits above it or like we said finding that edge and it's easy early in the morning we saw a lot of guys get on a shad spawn catching them around eelgrass and it's a, a good way to get a quick limit but then that milfoil really shines in the middle of the day and some of those morning periods. And then when it really gets in the heat of the day, we start to see some of our anglers that excel doing the punching deal. And when we talk about punching, it's those matted grass mats, lily pads, other types of grass that form a canopy. They pitch their baits, heavy weights like Caleb Kufal is in his second area. And when he breaks through there, those fish are waiting to ambush. So a lot of different grass here, and it's good to set that perspective because they're not all just keying in on one type of grass. We've seen a lot of different types of grass factor this week on Gunnersville. Always such a huge part of the equation here on this legendary lake that's been kicking them out for half a century. Exactly, and really what you're looking at right there is the reason why Lake Gunnersville is one of the best lakes in the country, and it's very unique from the other lakes on the Tennessee River chain. And, and the other thing about Lake Gunnersville, if you're watching here on FS1, it sustains an unbelievable amount of pressure. I mean, just yesterday, there was five different tournaments going on on this lake. Really, throughout the years, Lake Gunnersville always stands up to the pressure. I'm gonna go up the lake right now with another shallow water angler, a lot of history on the Bassmaster Elite Series, Greg Hackney. That's a keeper, but. Not like the last one. Be a hair longer, actually. Yeah, he's. Man, that fish took hard, but it's not that big. God, like jerked a hand. Rod right on my hand when he got it. Busy guy, this first hour or so of fishing. I'm talking yes, sir. The former angler of the year. Bass Masters. Now live. Uh, well, I, I came back in this little old creek, you know, and just plinking around. I had four bites in here in practice, pretty nice ones. And I think I've had four or five bites in here today. I got me three, uh, three keepers and uh, So we just, you know, it's a little faster start, I guess, than I've had, but the deal is I don't have any big, you know, I ain't caught any big ones. So uh, hopefully I will catch us one big one out of here before, uh, you know, I, like a four pounder anyway, just to kind of get me started. And I'll probably go back and get that big weight and that flipping stick out and start, you know, cause it's going to be that kind of day. It's either going to be, you know, for me, the way the areas that I'm fishing, it's going to be a frog or flipping. We're not supposed to have, uh, you know, hardly any wind today, and so conditions will be, you know, much like yesterday. Multiple winds going back through the entire history of the Bassmaster Elite Series for Greg Hackney, and as we mentioned, a former angler of the year. The collective. You know, awards for our top ten today, Ronnie Moore, is pretty and impressive. I you were talking about thing. that earlier. See, this is in the dark, and everywhere else has already got sun on it. And it seemed like every morning, you know, when it was dark, I so I was like, well, this might extend that morning deal a little bit. Okay, you mentioned it, Tommy. You've got couple of the best anglers in Elite Series history wins wise with Jason Christie and Greg Hagney and then you've got recent winners over the last two years uh, with Wes Logan and Chris Johnson. You have Zaldane, a two-time winner Cobb, all right behind Caleb Kufal. Saw a little bit of Chris already. Let's watch some more footage of him earlier today. Yeah, and really just a bad day one. 
caught just over 10 oh, pounds. The, the only so angler in our top 10 fishing offshore and really backed it up days two and three oh, with over 20 pounds. But the way he's catching them right here, fishing, call it 10 to 20 feet of water. Generally, when we have a Bassmaster event here on Gunnersville this time of year, a lot of these fish have made it offshore. Yeah, boy. For, you, for those of you watching F FS1, it's a good Sunday morning. Pretty out here on Lake Gunnersville. It's a nice fish. Big post spawn largemouth out here on these Lake Gunnersville ledges. We're on the Tennessee River system. It's May, it's getting hot, and these big largemouth like this are just getting out deep. Fishing about 20 feet of water along these channel markings here. That's awesome. It's flat calm today, so I had to slow down and pick up a finesse rig here. He's always fun to watch. I mean, he will stick with that all day long. Chris Saldane, he will live or die by that uh, approach he's taking here on day number four. Championship Sunday still with Caleb Kufal. Massive lead here against the other nine, but uh, they've all got a plan in mind. They all are going to be gunning for Kufal today, and Kufal could just end it all. We'll see how it works out. The Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville is sponsored by Hummingbird, Mercury, and by Nitro Boats. Bassmaster Elite Series consists of nine major tournaments. This is stop number seven and one that everyone points to. The big bass factory known as Lake Gunnersville. Greg Hackney trying to run down our leader, running down the lake at this same time. And today our TH Marine Weather Watch shows us really marks on the first hot weekend of the summer. It's been it's been a long, cooler sort of spring uh, for this area, but yeah. uh, you can feel summer in the air today. Really taking a look at that TH Marine weather report. It is just fantastic weather, and one of the reasons why there are so many fish shallow still. It has been a late, late spring, and these fish not quite getting offshore yet. Still a big population of big bass up in one to five feet of water. Gonna get out to our leader, who's been beating down the rest of the field, Caleb Kufal, with two fish already in his live well. See him dropping that bait and all these little holes in that milfoil grass. Been alternating between a Zoom Z hog and a one ounce dirty jig. Fast rate of fall. Dude, it came off too. Keeper. Boy, he just got a hold serve today, Mark Zona. Just Good. keep catching him. About as steady as he's catching him now. Yeah, it has been a, uh, we've, we talked about it. We've called a lot of tournaments, but for an angler to do that in known areas, areas that other competitors know about, very, very special week for Caleb Kufal so far from there get down to Luke Palmer, who's actually done the majority of his work on one shallow three to eight foot point all week long. This is a bass. Hope I don't have him hooked in the side. I got him foul hooked. Or it's a carp or a catfish. 
big old bass. Don't come off. Fish is barely hooked. Luke Palmer lost a lot of big bass right at the side of the boat on day three. Yes, sir. That one hook. It's out. <laughs> that never worked. Helps the cause. Oh. Helped his cause. Luke Palmer started the day in eighth place. He's now moved up five one, spots. One hook. We'll take her. Up in third, right behind she West looks Logan. So pretty and green. Luke Palmer catching him on a suspending jerk bait, which was thought to be it's the hardest probably thing to do one of is the, not rush a fish. One of the best it's techniques this tournament it's around. Kind of, it sucks. You got to take your time though. Just let them play themselves down. Because if I'd have rushed that fish. It wouldn't have worked, guaranteed. <laughs> Lakey's fishing is almost the way the 2019 Bassmaster Elite Series here was won. He was one of the guys who made the final day last fall here at Gunnersville 2020. Really, this is his style from Oklahoma, but it loves that shallow power fishing, so it's interesting to see him mixing it up slightly based on how the predominant patterns have been this week, Z. Gosh, that fish was barely pinned. Lake Gunnersville with all the vegetation, so clear now. This lake used to, really the entire lake used to only have about a foot of visibility at best. Now a lot of anglers talking about you can see down five to eight feet of water. Makes that jerk bait bite really good. Three pounds. Mm. I could see her just, I could see her into the water. Gosh darn it. <sighs> Fiddlesticks. Gosh darn it. <clears throat> well, successfully screwed up my clean fishing day already. Well, it hasn't been clean any day for Luke Palmer. He's, uh, he's been uh, pushing right through it, though, and so much faith in that spot right there. Let's take it back down to Chris Saldane. We'll take our eyes off him today. As you say, uh, Mark Zona, our, our, our lone offshore guy so far. <laughs> it's all alone out in the middle of Lake Gunnersville right there with Chris Saldane. And uh, look, he has been coming back the entire tournament the first day. He's in the bottom 20% of the field, backs it up with two 20-pound stringers, day two and three. Something to watch with him is everyone says, oh, you're manufacturing drama that he, he can't really come back from seventh and win. He's making up every point towards the classic out of the <laughs> hole that he's dug this year, and he's doing well this week to do so. Stay on there. Yeah. Fucking eat that spoon. Just a two pounder. Shad chaser. Marzoni, you mentioned that 2019 Bassmaster Elite Series event here on Lake Gondersville where Jamie Hartman came from 10 pounds off the pace to win this thing. Chris Aldane was a big part of that story as well, right at the end of the day. Yeah, and if you look at that oversized spoon that he's throwing, it's about the size of a hubcap on yes. your car. And really, that last hour with Chris Zaldane, if there would have been about another 30 minutes left that. to that day, Please Chris Zaldane more than likely would have won yeah. that effect. Yeah, I could have won the tournament here, no doubt. Giants, no doubt. giants biting offshore, and the most amazing thing about it was as the day went along, and I think you'll see it today, the bite got better, me? but a few critical Stay misses for Zaldane God, late he came off championship too. Sunday. Gosh. 
five pounder. Oh gosh. Oh. Oh, I'm running out of time, guys. Oh boy. I'm gonna haul butt. What time is it? It's 2.07. Oh, come on, one more. Oh, dude, I could have won the freaking tournament right here. I lost, how many did I lose? Three, four? There's one, stay on there. Please stay on there. That's the winning fit. No, he came off, he came off. Come on, he came off. Oh my gosh, that was a winner. God, they're huge and they're biting right now. Oh, please. I just need 10 minutes and I don't have it. That is sickening. One of the best cliffhangers of all time right at the end of the day, Chris Salting with those, any one of those fish he had come off and had stayed on. Man, it might've been a different outcome, probably would have been. Caught some really big ones in that year. He had so many close calls to winning a Bassmaster Elite Series event. Never put one away, and that one was kind of hard to watch the last mm. hour of competition. Gonna get on the water right now. Like Greg Hackney, one of the best shallow water fishermen, Bassmaster Elite Series. Jason Christie from Oklahoma already with one victory earlier this season. Couple already today. It's a good thing he ain't very smart, you know? Three keepers, not the size he's looking for today. Needs them all to be big today, even as it is right now with three in the boat. The better part of 14 pounds back of our leader. That's the, that's the tough arithmetic you have to fight all day long today if you are nine of our top 10. So strange to see a good fish caught like that and know that you are a mile behind the leader. Tough proposition for all nine of these guys, but they are going to give it their best. That's one thing you can count on all day long. They have worked so hard to get here. And they don't have very far to fall. They've only got 10 here, so they can't fall more than 10 spots today. So they're going to be going for it all day long. We'll be along with them. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Find inspiration for your next outdoor adventure. Check out the new Go Outside community. Where you can learn more and share your journey in the outdoors. Go to Bassmaster.com slash go outside or find us on social media today. Uh, we talked about it all day yesterday. Everybody loves going outside, especially <laughs> and the weather we've seen this week on Lake Gunnersville, starting off with about 20 to 30 mile per hour winds really laying down throughout the last 24 hours. And that's when we've kind of seen the weights go up. When you talk about the weights, there's a tough situation for nine of our 10 anglers left on championship mm -hmm. Sunday. A 10 pound plus deficit to one man, Caleb Kufal, a man who fought very, very hard to get into this top 10, took him all day yesterday, having his best tournament of the year. Elite Series, North Carolina's Shane Leinberger. Shane Leinberger fishing his first top 10 in a Bassmaster Elite Series event. Great showing this week. Shane Leinberger, one of those anglers that really needed I love a top a finish like here. A lot of them are overlooked. Boop. Get in here, huh? Remember what I said? I love fishing docks like this. A lot of them are overlooked. Everybody says, oh, they're too shallow. Yeah, they're too shallow, all right. Yeah. 
That's the kind we need. It gets to go on the good side. Get under there, you brim eating sucker. Huh, give me a little. <laughs> Shane Leinberger getting some good positive results, doing something a little bit different from everyone else in our top 10 on this day. This Lake Gunnersville studied constantly by people everywhere, fished constantly by people. One of the most trafficked, one of the most pressured lakes in the country. And to give us our uh, Humminbird Unlock the Lake, let's turn to our associate right now. He studies it all the time as well. Davey Height, what have you got for us? So, so Tommy, what I wanted to show you, looking at my graph here, I'm, I'm about probably a half mile offshore, and there's lily pads between me and the shoreline. And what a lot of these fishermen are doing, some are fishing the lily pads, there are some fish up there, but especially during the shad spawn, most of these anglers, if you look at my graph here, you'll see isolated clumps of vegetation, and that there's certain clumps of vegetation that those fish you see here on the side imaging you see these clumps of vegetation here and those shad in the mornings they get around these clumps and that's where a lot of the anglers have really done well during during the early morning when the when the sun is low but then you'll also see here looking at side imaging it looks like little craters little cavities that's actually where bluegill are spawning off in about five or six feet of water and a lot of those anglers are catching fish there. And that's what has kept the fish shallower than we would normally see. Normally at this time of the year, a lot of the anglers would be catching big stringers offshore like we see. Only really Chris Aldane and Brandon Polnick had some success doing it. But because this vegetation and these bluegill are still here, those bass, uh, the majority of the population of bass are in this six feet and less. So there's your hummingbird unlock the lake. If you use your graph, you can find where these fish move before they go all the way out to the main lake. Davey, kind of talk about looking at this hummingbird unlock the lake. When you talk about those craters, those honeycombs of bluegill beds, really what ends up happening is a lot of these largemouth reload and kind of wolf pack and just hunt throughout the entire day. Yeah, they do. And, and that's our leaders, other than Chris Aldane, like I say, he's been able to make it happen. But the other nine anglers, that's the way they've caught the majority of their fish, up shallow, either the shad spawn early or the bluegill once the sun gets up. Davey, great job. Thank you so very much. Uh, Davey Height, the hummingbird unlocked the lake for us today, helping us understand uh, where they're finding these fish in this difficult kind of transitional period for them here before summer gets going full on. Exactly. We're going to get back out with Luke Palmer right now. And one of the real cool things about this event, listening to Davey Height right there, is so many different techniques. I mean, we've already seen you know, four or five different techniques today with your leaders. Luke Palmer, the only one surviving with a suspending jerk bait. See how erratic he makes that bait, trying to get a reaction bite. how big he is. He hit it really hard, so he's probably a little one. I got him foul hooked one. I ain't gonna take any chances, huh? Good quality for Luke yeah, Palmer today. <laughs> Plagued with a lot of small fish on day pounder, three we'll right early. His two closest pursuers, Luke Palmer, as we said, started the day in eighth place, catching him a little bigger today, a little more steadily. Not losing so many, moving up into third, and West Logan still solid in second place. He's hooked up now. One little bitty thing. He ain't gonna keep it. Short and fat.
<laughs> By God, he did. Fish have to be 15 inches in length in order to be put in the live well and counted toward a limit. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. Watching Wes Good Logan work. victory a couple weeks ago at Neely Henry. Wes Logan is the real deal, man. He is, uh, you're going to see a lot of him on championship Sundays here on FS1 in the next few years. Very, very Two versatile. Two pounder. On the wacky rig trick worm. Is he the, the crop of anglers that produced Caleb Kufal, Bob Downey, West Logan? For some reason out here, these fish, I just seem to be able to catch them better on this small little Alabama wacky worm. To Wisconsin. Brandon Cobb, live. We'll go in the grass. There's another fish up there, so I don't really want to troll up there. Go get him. It's not that big. I'm gonna have to go over there though. I might have him. I think I got him. He's gonna give up now. I still got him. He just gave up. Not a bad one. There's another fish on that bed, so I didn't want to troll after him like I have been. <laughs> Moving forward, getting the job done. It's just simply going to have to step it up a little bit. All of them are looking to step it up a little bit, but our anglers sticking with what got them so far in this tournament and trying to keep it going today. And Hopefully jump multiple big ones before the day is over. Catching them good though, a good Another, Sunday morning. Absolutely. Another great morning on Gunnersville. Really, day three, yesterday morning, early today. A lot of fish catches and big ones again here on Lake Gunnersville. Fun to watch the best in the world sort of work out on one of the most challenging yet most promising, most bountiful bass fisheries in the country. Fantastic Lake Gunnersville still early going on Championship Sunday here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. <laughs> You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Good Sunday morning, so great to have you with us as we cover the final day championship Sunday on Magnificent Lake Gunnersville, which hosted the World Championship just 14 months ago. That's coming up very, very soon. The 2021 edition, June 11th, 12th, and 13th, the most important three days of fishing in the sport, not by a little, but by a lot. And for the first time ever, we're gonna be doing it in Fort Worth, Texas. That's gonna be our host city. Great, great town, great place to visit, great sports town as well. And Lake Ray Roberts on the Trinity River system ways away big bass opportunities for these anglers to seek a world championship a life-changing a life-changing thing to win the Bassmaster classic you do not want to miss it there's a look at lake ray roberts lake ray roberts right there mark Dona. yeah and there will be some, definitely some big ones caught off of ray roberts cool to have a Bassmaster classic again in the summertime months haven't done that for a few years mm -hmm. Ray Roberts going to head back over here to Lake Gunnersville. Just walking on over to Gunnersville, taking a look at our leaderboard. It has been a pretty much one man show. Taking the rest of the Bassmaster Elite Series field to the woodshed throughout the entire week Boy. from Wisconsin. Possibly going to be our first Wisconsin champion on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Yeah, Caleb Kufal come down here and made it look very, very easy, but just leaving everyone in the dust, and he continues to do so. But plenty of fishing time left on Championship Sunday. 
So we set the tone, Tommy, and we broke down the types of grass and, you know, what the anglers are seeing when they fish milfoil versus eelgrass versus the matted vegetation. And now we're going to take you into the, some of the top lures and implement the strategy involved. What do you do? Do you fish in the grass? Do you fish around the grass on the edges? And we're seeing kind of that disparity with a couple of the grass anglers in our top lures. Greg Hackney being one that has fished in and around the grass earlier in the week when we had a little bit more wind, the, you know, there were some uh, opportunities for moving baits and he would throw a strike, strike king swim jig around and then he also would punch a strike king rodent in hard candy, kind of those more natural bluegill colors. And then we see another guy fishing in and around the grass, looking for those holes and then also looking on top. And that is Jason Christie utilizing two different frogs, one more of like a shad pattern and one more of like a green pumpkin, a natural color pattern. And then he's also been picking up a spinning rod and throwing around a, a small yum dinger in those holes where the fish are going to be sitting right on the edge and they ambush it when it drops by. And then we look at two of the guys who are up at the top of the leaderboard, Caleb Kufal and Wes Logan. For Wes Logan, using different colors than we see from most of the other top 10. He's using black and blue in all of his soft plastics, focusing on a heavy weight, punching that grass, also flipping around that milfoil, utilizing black and blue uh, Zoom Z Craw, as well as other soft plastics as well. And then Caleb Kufal, the guy with the big lead, has really relied on one big deal, and then as soon as that started to peter out, he mixed in another key deal. He's been using a Zoom Z Hog. He was using three quarter ounce and then also one ounce, and he saw, he said yesterday, I don't have to go above one ounce today. It's been just one ounce. And then we've also seen him mix in that big flipping jig that you mentioned, Z. So the top lures, it's really the who wants to fish in the grass and who wants to fish around the grass this week at Gunnersville. Good stuff, Ronnie. Great to see what the tools are, what tools are being used by the best in the business to fish the uh, estimable grass at Lake Gunnersville. Tyler Rabat from Louisiana fought so hard to get in this yeah. top 10 today. This is, this is earlier. Earlier today with a topwater frog. Tyler Rabat catching a few giants on that yesterday. We've got anglers from all over. Wisconsin angler on top today, but our Louisiana anglers are a big component of the Bassmaster Elite Series. And Tyler Rabat, one of the most promising. Slim, Louisiana. Every day I'd come home from school, go straight to the lake where just go fishing, and that's kind of where I started out was in the bayous back here and in the lakes, and uh, I just learned so much shallow water fishing over here. It's not much to do around in South Louisiana. It's just either hunting or you fishing, and uh, that's the, I guess that's why I call it sportsman paradise because you could go five minutes anywhere, you could hit land or water, and you could go duck hunting, deer hunting. You can catch redfish and bass in the same spot, which is pretty cool. That feeling I get when I crank up the gator in the morning and I'll head onto the back, into the bayous, and uh, head onto the stand or the blind, it's, it's awesome. Just, just to look at the wildlife, that's really why I like fishing and hunting, just to be there in the peacefulness and just quiet. And a lot of times I'll just watch the deer and I won't even shoot them. <laughs> Bassmaster Elite Series. It's uh, I think what everybody in the country or the world dreams of making. It's just Bassmaster Elite Series. When they were a kid, they dreamed about it. It's something I worked for my whole life, and I didn't. I want to put in the work and make sure it, it happens. That's, that's why I just never give up. Remember that old song, Louisiana Man? That's that's who they wrote it about, right there, <laughs> Tyler Rubin. Yes. Got a couple different farm systems, some leagues, Tommy. The Opens, how you qualify for the Elites, and then the College Series, he was one who's dominated uh, the College back Series. Back at home, it's just uh, pretty similar to this. It's a little grass everywhere like this, this thick stuff. We, we know I'm like, well, we, Heisen's is mainly what we have. And uh, they'll just get stacked on a bank similar to this, up on a, what we call Jean's, but it's a uh, cut grass. And, uh, that's, that's the number one thing I love to do at the house. Everybody down there knows, like, whoever I'm fishing with me, my best friends, anybody, we're just punching and frogging. That's the number two, one and two things we we love to do. And, I mean, that's how you win down there. The big fish sit under this year-round, 
and uh, especially during a spawn. A lot of people don't think like they spawn on the lilies and stuff like that, but or hyacinths, but down there by us, that, that's like the, their ticket. That's where they mainly spawn, so doing this is pretty awesome. And the funny part is like on this stretch right here and back there, uh, is that a spotted bass? A spotted bass. Never caught one punching. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, we just do that at the house punching just because, I mean, if you want to win, you got to have a frog rod or a punching rod in hand all day. So, but yeah, this right here, this stretch. Uh, I've actually, I fished the BFL here in June last year, and I, I think I could have won it on this one stretch, and I just lost a couple fives and six. It's just, it, it's similar to that. I was just pulling a, a punch weight out, and they would chase it, and I'd miss them, like always. You see what, like, you see what Tyler yeah, Rivette, your leader, Caleb Kufal, Wes Logan, you... Show those top baits, Ronnie. One of the biggest things with that is rate of fall. Guys using three quarter and one ounce oh, weights man. in this vegetation and sometimes bigger. Bluegills. And really what it does, it penetrates that vegetation. And the other thing, it gets a reaction bite. That oh, bait is not just the grass again. falling very slowly. Those fish do not have time to think about it and just react to it when they're flipping close to the boat. Let's snatch it out of the grass again. Number five. They, all these fish here have these little mites in their mouth. And I don't know what they are. Every one of them. I don't know what they are. Do you know what those are? Every fish Rivette you these and Cobb, mites. those are the two college alumni in our top 10 today. Rivette from Nickel State. Never missed a college championship in his five years there. Made the bracket, had a shot at winning the college portion of that. And then Clemson University represented by Brandon Cobb. Now he is actually a college coach oh, yeah. at Lander University in uh, South Carolina. Handle what you're doing and the Luke Palmer. Luke Palmer way ahead of schedule. I've been on one yesterday. Back and it was with my buddy and he was pretty good at it. When I got off of it, I shall never ever get on one of these things with you ever again. Because you don't have any control when you're sitting on the back. Don't come up on the other side of the boat. I don't know what he is or how big he is. I even got him hooked good or he's in the top of the back. Pretty good fish. Come on, come get in the boat with me, please. Stress of this. <laughs> just kind of hit your button every now and then and kind of keep them the way they can just let them run. Then I'll probably lose him trying to tell you how to land a fish. Stay on fish. I'm here. Hmm. Landing fish 101. <laughs> Good, probably three pounder there. Oh, I would say it was all at three pounds. A great, great morning for Luke Palmer. Lost a lot of key fish yesterday. They're staying buttoned up today here on Championship Sunday. Yeah, fishing a lot cleaner today. What a battle between them. Luke Palmer and Brandon Cobb, those guys are kind of swapping out into second place there. Both of them with limits, good limits today, but still no one making major inroads into the lead of Caleb Kufal. He's still the story as we move forward here on Sunday. 
The Berkeley Passmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville is sponsored by Minn Kota. Powerful. And by Skeeter Boats. Today is a big day on the Bassmaster Elite Series. We are here at legendary Lake Gunnersville. So much of the history of tournament bass fishing has been written on this iconic lake on the Tennessee River. And Caleb Kupal has put together a monster three days of fishing to enjoy a giant lead to start this day. No one's mounted a huge offensive against him yet. Everybody's doing, though, Mark Zona. Everybody's doing what they can with pretty good results. Absolutely, and a big hats off to all of the Bassmaster cameramen, but we are a man down for good reason this week. Brian Evie and his wife, Kristen Evie, welcoming Ella Evie last night. Hey. Woke up to that this morning. Big congratulations to the Evie family. Brian, cameraman on the Bassmaster Elite Series and Zona Show, and I text them, okay, time to get back to work. Congrats, bud. Yeah, Huge way to go. Congrats to the Evie family. There yes. you go. Good stuff. Nice picture. Let's see the way our 10 anglers are distributed around Lake Gunnersville. I am very close to uh, Scottsboro, our fantastic host city. Chris Zaldane, oh, yeah. Luke Palmer, a place he's pretty much camped out all week long. And let's get over to Jason Christie. Jason Christie with a tough practice, and he has, we talked about it yesterday, he has done a lot with a little here on Lake Gunnersville this week, frog fishing in the morning and locking that spinning rod in his hand. That's cool, just back. Mm -hmm. Bass fishing fans have known Jason Christie, most of them going back to 2013 when he qualified for the Bassmaster Classic there on his home waters in Oklahoma. And then his first win came in that Rookie season there in the clear water of Bull Shoals Lake in Arkansas. Bouncing some schooling fish and uh, made a big move on the final day. Yeah, and our Bassmaster MC nails it. One of the most feared anglers in the field. When Jason Christie gets in the top 10, there's a pretty good shot. He might hold that trophy at the end of the day from there. Big, big victory on Lake Dardanelle and really Jason Christie one of the best anglers to ever come out of the state of Oklahoma. Look that, Jason Christie, pretty good smallmouth fisherman. Two victories up on Lake St. Clair, where we saw him win a couple years ago. But I got her in my He's a natural, but he works hard at it. doing a great student of the game. If you were watching him a couple weeks ago on FS1, Sabine River in Texas, Jason Christie, see that victory on Lake St. Clair. Took a little time out. Took a little time out from the past Master yeah. Elite Series. Yeah, got away from the, the rat race for a bit. Yeah, exactly. Well, he was in another situation. And we went down the Sabine River that was not very kind to Jason Christie in years past. Not an easy tournament to win, Jason Christie, though. Whenever yes. they are in shallow, dirty water, they're right in his wheelhouse, dominating the Sabine River event. We talked about it yesterday. Jason Christie is here for one reason. He said, I'm here to qualify for the Bassmaster Classic again. Trust me, Jason Christie, he is here to win the Bassmaster Classic.
gotta get bigger. Well, you notice guys like Brandon oh. Cobb, Jason Christie, really, really long casts on these areas that have spawn and bluegill. I know it is, but water so clear, so shallow. Is that number five? One of the ways, the way you qualify for the World Championship 2022 Bassmaster Classic is with your points here. Skeeter Angler ah. of the Year Points Watch right now shows us, of course, Seth Fighter on top, a dominating performance, and look who's moved up into second place. It's Jason Christie. And really, Tommy Sanders, our Skeeter Angler of the Year Watch, is eerily similar to this tournament. Seth Fighter starting to run away with it. We have two smallmouth fisheries left on our schedule. One Lake Champlain, New York. From there, we're going to the St. Lawrence River. Seth Fighter is going to be a handful the rest of the season. Not that he hasn't been already. But as you pointed out, we've also seen Jason Christie went up there in the heart of smallmouth country as well. We will have to manufacture some drama, I think, in the Angler of the Year race. <laughs> so what else is new? You see Caleb Kufal. He has gone to that secondary area where he did so much damage late yesterday. Caught some big ones there on day one. Not that many on day two. That primary stretch made one call. Said the wind really affected it day two. Caleb's lead now stands at seven pounds even, but uh, the thing to bear in mind is uh, many of the anglers have filled out their five fish limit already, and Caleb uh, is yet to get there, so every pound he puts in the boat, and then in terms of keepers, goes right to his bottom line. So uh, he can add to that quite easily. Kupal holding on to a about a seven pound lead right now, unofficially. Ten anglers out here with one thing in mind, not making a cut. That's all done for the week. You gotta go for that trophy, that hard to get. Blue trophy that signifies a victory on the Bassmaster Elite Series. These guys have worked so hard to get into this top 10 today. I believe he's another keeper. Maybe he's really fast. They're trying to save their best for last. They're going to need it. Caleb Kufal, just a jaw dropping performance on Lake Gondersville this week in Alabama. Great stuff to watch, and we've got more on the way. Yeah, come here. Yeah. echo hook. Yeah, boy. Yes. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Today, the best NASCAR season ever continues as the Cup Series makes its long-awaited debut at the Circuit of the Americas Road Course in Austin, Texas. The green flag drops at 2.30 Eastern right here on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Oh, and I know you are fired up for that later today, Tommy Sanders. Little free gaming right after Bassmaster Live. You betcha. You betcha. Love the road course. Taking a look at our exactly right. Taking a look at our hummingbird bird's eye view with Chris Johnston, and that's what makes Blake Gunnersville so so special. Chris Johnston, really a two prong approach in this tournament, starting out offshore, little secondary offshore area, but you get a really good look at why this lake is so good. So much vegetation, so much cover for all these fish to hide and a lot of guys that caught them and look here's the best way to put it lake gunnersville is throttled daily these fish are conditioned they're highly pressured see guys like jason christie brandon cobb chris johnston making very very long casts and all this cover yeah um it's not going so well missed two on a frog one was a four pounder at least i saw him and uh, now we're just gonna go do a bigger stretch of grass where I've got one bite each day. In practice, I had two or three. Um, 
Hopefully we can get a couple here, and then after that, we're just gonna go fish and look for new water. Super, super solid first couple of days for Chris Johnson, right at 19 pounds plus, and yesterday just uh, kind of deflated him a little bit. Couldn't quite get it going the way he got it going, the first two. Yeah, a lot, lot slower for Chris Johnston on days three compared to the first two days of this tournament. He had a little offshore spot that he would start on, a spring right around the corner from our takeoff in North Saudi Creek, call it eight to 10 feet of water, but he throttled it with a couple other anglers catching 30 to 40 fish a day. And then a lot of his bigger ones would come in this thicker cover like that. You're looking at from above, you can kind of tell though, Chris Johnston's starting to run out of bites here on Gunnersville. Johnson became the first Canadian to win an Elite Series event last season up on Lake Ontario. But he knows these environments very well, too. Yeah, another great season for Chris Johnston and his brother Corey. Fourth place, Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. It's a little slower today. This is one catch from earlier today for Chris Johnston. Yeah. Drop shot in a robo worm color morning dawn and that exact spot you see Chris Johnston on right there. There's been about 50 to 60 pounds of here. bass caught on that spot and it is a one a cast one. deal. It's not like Take a big it. area. What happened for Chris? His second year in the Bassmaster Elite Series last year. Going up to a place where he was definitely one of the favorites, Lake Ontario. He came to the Elite Series with a great resume and a lot of it built up in this part of the world. Yeah, I started hearing about the Johnston brothers about, call it 12 years ago, dominating a lot of Canadian smallmouth tournaments. And Chris Johnston living up to that reputation last year on the St. Lawrence River, making a long run to Lake Ontario, battling big, big waves the final day. Unbelievable weights all four days of those tournament. And look for look for Chris Johnston to be a big factor in oh, our northern yeah. swing in a yeah. few weeks. You bet. He's only two and a half pounds shy of making a hundred pounds on smallmouth, which would have been a first. Mm. Colleague Dave Mercer, who's from Canada, says uh Plenty of the lakes he fishes up in Canada in the height of summer have looked very similar to this one right here. Yeah, and that's what's really weird about the transformation of Lake Gunnersville. Because if you came to this lake 20 years ago, still a lot of grass in it, but the visibility in this water was only, we talked about it earlier in our broadcast, it was really only a foot at best. But when that when the arrival of that eel grass came into Gunnersville, the water has become gin clear, and it does. It looks like a lot of northern largemouth lakes now. Z, how does that affect bass and how you have to approach them? I've heard, we've heard anglers say they've spoken them. Well, it's the, that's a that's a, a good a great question. But on this body of water, you know, we've talked about it at length. These fish are pressured. And now when you're dealing with a pressured bass that also is weary from that clear water, <laughs> you, what you're going to end up seeing is throughout, I think, the next decade on Lake Gunnersville, I think you're going to see a lot of different techniques, maybe that you didn't see here, a lot more finesse style techniques that we've seen in this tournament play. And really the other thing that we've seen all week long in this tournament is these fish really bite in flurries. You know, we look, Caleb Kufal has dominated this event, 
but really it's been little flurries throughout each day of this tournament that he's done. It's not like he's catching. Like when we go north, there's guys catching 40, 50, 60 bass a day. That's not the case here. You just see little bite windows where these bigger ones feed. Gosh, you see all that vegetation. You say to yourself, if you've never been to Gunnersville, where do you start? Yeah. It all looks good. Bringing in now our leader, Caleb Kufal. Still three moderate sized fish in the live well, but uh, man, oh man. Tommy, dare I say it though? This is his slowest morning by far of the last four days. Yeah, especially considering he's he's made his move already. And uh, oh man! Oh wow. no! It's a good one. Not good. Chris Johnson fishing in a very popular area we've actually seen in years past, early in the spring. Both of the anglers fishing right around the BB Comer Bridge. Got a good hook in that one. He ain't coming back. Coming back. See, Hackney mentioned he has not been getting bites till after 9 a.m. And uh, Kufal's magic was it not started at 9.24 when he caught 14 pounds in 15 minutes. Yeah, that was the one thing that was really cool to watch with Kufal yesterday because it was, look, he had four nice ones. They weren't giants. He just four solid fish early yesterday. And this mat punching bite that you see him doing right here in the real heavy vegetation Never, never transpired on day two, but he said that wind really hurt him. We're going to get back down lake right now. Jason Christie. Christie in fourth place now. He's got a, got a limit in the boat. Just under 10, 10 pounds. That was right where I seen that great big one yesterday. And when they went, I was like, that might be him. That might be him. Jason Christie plugging away there. Get up above 10 oh, pounds. Caleb Kufal is definitely the man to beat. Great yes. day, 127 pounds. And just Ooh. building on that, especially yesterday. Exactly right. About this time yesterday, you nailed it, Such. Caleb Kufal absolutely went on a tear. Not a lot of bites, but the ones that he set the hook on. Great, great quality for Kufal. Zoom Z Hog and a one ounce dirty yes. jig. Two prong approach, and he has done it to perfection. Ooh. You said it, Tommy Sanders, earlier. It has been yes. woodshed come up in the entire week for the Wisconsin. Very tough, even. Even for Wes Logan, who started the day in second place, had to say hats off to Caleb Kufal just for showing us that they are still here in these environments that I like to fish too. I, I'm, I'm grateful to him, but I'm getting whipped by him day in and day out on this special week for the Wisconsin angler here on Lake Gunnersville. More of the Berkeley Bass Master Elite on the way as we enter the second quarter of this championship Sunday game. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. 
Find inspiration for your next outdoor adventure. Check out the new Go Outside community where you can learn more and share your journey in the outdoors. Go to Bassmaster.com slash go outside or find us on your social media today. Oh yeah, barbecuing, campfires, fishing, the whole thing, Tommy Sanders. You like you like going outside, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. All of us do, especially this summer. Looking forward to hitting the road, hitting the trail, and most definitely hitting the water. I uh, know you do, boy. Take a look, <laughs> take a look at our Minn Kota. Unlock the lake here in northern Alabama. Lake Gundersville on the Tennessee River, cradled right in between Nick and Jack and Wheeler, 75 miles long. Take a look at all of our catches here on Minn Kota Unlock the Lake. And really, man, a couple catches right in honeycomb. But the story of this tournament really has been within two or three miles of our takeoff. Goose Pond, North Saudi Creek from there to the BB Comer Bridge. Looking at this Minn Kota Unlock the Lake. Wes Logan nailed it. He said, look, I don't have a lot of history here, but history tells me in Bassmaster Elite Series events, Stay close to Goose Pond, right outside of Scottsboro, Alabama. And that is where the damage has been done all week long for a lot of our leaders. That is your Minn Kota. Unlock the lake. Oh. Just 10 anglers out there today. 10 alone have qualified from our original field of 98. We fished the first two days, full field, cut it to 48, and these 10 have survived. Big bass, big stage, big dreams, and you combine that with going outside, things are. Oh well, there you go. Things are working. Now you they are totally in a different. Big, but big lead also for Caleb Kufal, <laughs> for sure. Right. And it, with that lead now seven pounds, too early to start manufacturing dramas, like as you confess that both of us do incessantly here on our show. But I'm telling you, I, I mean, we, we got a good limit for Luke Palmer, fifteen twelve, Brandon Cobb, thirteen two, and as you pointed out. Maybe the slowest start yet for Caleb Kufal. By far, by yeah. far. I mean, is it probable? No. No, no. Possible? Maybe yes. Caleb Kufal live. Again. Zoom Z Hog soft plastic. One ounce tungsten weight when he gets into this thicker vegetation. And we talked about how slow his morning was yesterday. And boy, he shut us up in a hurry at oh, about yeah. 10 30. Yeah, it didn't take long. We were sent packing very quickly. Yeah, and do not blame him. His lead no. hit fell to two and a quarter pounds, and then 15 minutes later, he's up by 12. Again, he's only got three keepers, so a lot of headroom, a lot of room to grow very quickly for him. Next two fish go right to his bottom line. Really, where we saw him do a lot of damage. Very high percentage, isolated patches of thick grass, points, little irregularities, not getting in those giant mats, but really on the outside of them. Any of the little notch points off those mats have counted for a lot of his big ones on days one and three. Back over to Chris Johnston, a couple of good fish. Uh, he has missed today or not been able to get to the boat. A couple of four pounders by his reckoning. Got two in the live well. You know, we got to really dive into yeah, this yesterday here on FS1. Stuff, yeah. in, 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 in the time of, of $15,000 electronics, to see what Kufal has done, he's a very throwback angler fish is shallow you never see Kufal out deep trying to contact mars with his electronics <laughs> yeah good to see it it's yeah. good to see a tournament where it's you know shallow water power fishing 101 it's been a fun fun event 
Yeah, you like to see just the fundamentals play once in a while. It's a good one. Come on, stay hooked. Not as big as I thought. Decent one. Finally got one in the boat. We've missed three on the frog. Finally got one. Is a fun way to catch them this time of year. This is a technique that Chris Johnston used to beef up his limits, especially on day one and two. Days one and two, if he can get it going, he can jump back into the top four or five. I don't think he's very big either. Nope. I might have swallowed it. It came at me. I didn't feel him. Ate my worm. These guys are super versatile, but but see, this is this is his specialty right here, right? Yeah, every time that we've covered Caleb Kufal, he has never been deeper than, than three no. feet of water. No. Got to really meet this angler last year in our coverage on Lake Eufaula, southern Alabama. This is really the biggest day. Uh, uh oh. It's a keeper. Not a big one, but. Just make sure. Yeah, it's probably, I don't know, two and a half maybe? Two and a quarter. Caleb Kufal doing it old school, but he's a guy who would like to bone up on his electronics just like everybody, just like all of us. I'm a primarily a shallow water guy. I really don't dabble too much with the, like the electronics and out deep, and that's another thing that I'm trying to get better at going forward. But uh, pretty much, you know, I like to stay in the mud and flip a jig. Probably is my favorite technique. Love love flipping a jig around, you know, wood, milfoil, docks, just anything like that. Being an elite series pro against these guys, you really notice uh, a lot of holes in your game, and those are kind of, you know, holes that I want to fill going forward. So I'm working really hard, you know, to try and better myself, you know, get better as an angler. Great guy, great angler, and really the biggest day by far of Caleb Kufal's career, but you would not know it watching him do his job today. Very even-tempered, quiet. Workman going about his business with great, great results this week on Lake Gunnersville. Just added another one moments ago. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Fox Sports Live, um, you know, they are delivering the fun. Although we're doing this out here for a living to make money, it's fun to bass fish. So whether you're competing in a tournament, taking your wife out, taking your kids out, or out there with your friends, bass fishing is fun. Fox Sports, thank you for showing that. Chris Zeldane, Big Baits, Big Bass, that's the guy you think of, one of 
our 10 players out there today. That, that's a, one of the beauties of Lake Gunnersville, Mark Zona, is that you can pick your poison here. You've always emphasized that. Uh, absolutely right. And if you really look across the board this entire tournament, that's what really makes Lake, Lake Gunnersville special. It's really can do whatever you want and have a pretty good shot at catching fish like that. And throughout this week, so many different oh, techniques. And I'll tell you of all the Look, we've covered a lot of deep water ledge fishing tournaments here. And it's, eh, you know, I mean, they're good. You see big bass caught. But to catch them shallow, man, that is fantastic. A great, great event this time around. Like I said, Tommy, it's just like going outside. It's fun. Exactly. One word. Fun. Chris Eldane, like Chris Eldane said. Well, it has been a fun week. It's got to have been for Caleb Kufal. He, he keeps it quiet, though, but you know he's been enjoying the incredible, incredible way he's outpaced some of the best anglers, all the best anglers in the world here on Gunnersville this week. Caleb Kufal right now with four fish in his live well. Still, like yesterday, room to grow. Every little bit helps, right? Man, skinny one, but it's over. All right, it's Come done. On. It's done, Tommy. It's done. Well, we tried. We've you know, done everything. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, no, he's two and a half. I would say he's. He's just long and skinny, like a lot of these have been. Oh, it takes a load off my mind, though, to have a limit. It's not even 9 o'clock. It tells me they're biting in here. I should be able to get some more bites in here. Gotta get rid of that little one though. That's... Yeah, you gotta start calling them golf course fish, eh? Yeah. That one is very, very borderline. Well, you would not think it is the biggest day of his no. career, but it is. limit the boat. Basically all he had to do was make sure he caught a few today. He's done more than that. We'll take a look back on his day early on. Not as fast a start as the pre three previous days, but if you really kind of break down what he's done listening, he doesn't have those voices. Man, should I go out deep? Should I go try, you know, some secondary offshore stuff. He does one thing. He starts shallow, stays shallow. And I listened to Davy Height earlier. Oh that's to his benefit. He didn't have a lot to go on off of his practice. Really went with two primary areas. This one right here around the corner from our takeoff at Goose Pond Landing. Zoom Z Hog soft plastic, three quarter ounce weight, and a one ounce dirty jig in that mill foil. But it's when he has transitioned up to the BB Comer Bridge, getting in these mats. It's a keeper. Not numbers, not big numbers, but the quality throughout this area has been there almost the entire event, except yes. for day two, Caleb Kufal. All right, How you feeling right now? What, 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 what's going through your head? Well, I got a lemon now, so that it's kind of relaxing. You know, you can fish a little bit. A little bit more calm and precise, but um, they ain't big. I don't have anything big in there, so hopefully we can make some calls in here. Seems like there's there's definitely you know fit quite a few fish here yet. It's just lacking the big bite that we had yesterday. So I would imagine. 
I'm going to get a shot at one, though, at some point here. Yeah, I'm going to be fired up a little bit. It's gonna <laughs> Hopefully it happens here. And I tried to tried to get in his head a little bit, learn about a little bit about Caleb Kufal last night, Tommy Trying Sanders. To the and I said, as best I can. Being from Wisconsin, I said, yeah. Put it in front of one. Married fella? No. Uh, well, no. like I said, the, the the thickest stuff you can, pretty much. That's what I caught him caught him out of yesterday. You know, just the the thickest stuff imaginable. There's a little bit more eelgrass in here today. I don't know if it blew in at some point but it is kind of hard to maneuver because so i'm just in a a bunch of junk here so i asked him i said are you are you married caleb no 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 girlfriend no and he goes you know Maybe if I win, I'll I'll, I'll get one. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> wait a minute. Is that it? Okay. It was, it was very. It was listen. It was a very honest, that's, simple thought. Well, that sounds logical to me. You're, you're, you're what you said a moment ago. No distractions. Your typical angler we'd be following in this position would be worried about it. Who's catching them? Where? How the other guys are doing? Do I need to make this move? None of that hey. seems to play into it for him. There is a guy in this top ten, Greg Hackney. This is how his career started, fishing this way. And all of our hardcore Bassmaster Live viewers know that Greg Hackney started shallow state, shallow, made a career. Yeah, we are in here a little bit style. earlier today than, than yesterday, so I don't know. If... And one of the things that Greg Hackney said throughout his career, becoming versatile, has made me cash a lot of checks. But at times, he said, I feel it has hurt me winning events because he goes i literally i i know how to do too much compared to when my career started to where i just had one bullet in my gun all i did was come to tournaments fish shallow and win a lot of titles caleb kufal is the exact situation 20 years later as greg hackney was at the beginning of his career it's a good point right there and recognize peak performances and man we're looking at mm -hmm. a, a rare and wonderful thing and that is a wire to wire victory on the Bassmaster Elite Series Mark Zona. Yeah and really looking at your marathon peak performance day one that is a huge huge stringer this time of year just under 28 pounds where a lot of anglers thought nah, you know you get around 20 pounds you have definitely done something slipped up a little bit on day number two just a hair over 15 pounds, but boy, back at it yesterday. Marathon peak performance, the second biggest stringer of the tournament. And so rare to do that in known areas, fishing around other competition, doing the exact same thing, exact same technique. Your marathon peak performance, not a lot of giants today, but Caleb Dufault has got it done once again here on Lake Gunnersville. That is your marathon peak performance. Gotta say, day number two rolled around the end of the day when he didn't catch so many. Everyone said, boy, it's, they're all gone. They've been fished out by these marauders in the same place with them. And he proved us all wrong, Mark Zona. That leaderboard does not even look real at the top of it. No, no, just an incredible eye-popping performance by a great, great angler from the Midwest, the upper Midwest, Caleb Kufal. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Ten anglers out there on Championship Sunday. You might think they have a, a whole lake to all to themselves, but that's never the case on Lake Gunnersville. We don't have any rookies in our top ten, but they have figured big in the story this week. Brian New uh, actually took over the lead at one point for just a few minutes during this tournament. KJ Queen of North Carolina has spent some time in the top ten, and those two locked in a big-time battle for a very, very uh, 
desired trophy, rookie of the year. Seaguar Bassmaster rookie watch right there for you. Tight race. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. It has been a performance from Brian New. He is fun to cover, and he is the real deal. Taking a look at our playing field here at Lake Gunnersville. And like we said, our takeoff right there outside of Scottsboro, Alabama. Goose Pond Landing, a lot of history, a lot of history this week. But we're going to head down to Honeycomb Creek at the bottom of Lake Gunnersville with Shane Leinberger live. Come on, fish. I see some fry right there. There he is. That's a big one. Get in here. Huh? I don't know. We found us one of them. <laughs> There we go. Good one right there for Lineberger. He gets to go on the good, good side. Good to see him in our yeah. first, Thank you, baby. this is his first top Thank 10 you, on the Bassmaster Elite Series. He's had a pretty tough go of it the last couple of years. Great event, great event. Shane getting closer to a limit right now. Back to our leader, Caleb Kufal. In the past 45 minutes, he's put his fourth and fifth fish in the boat and just about slammed that door shut on everyone else uh, in the process. I, I always have confidence, you know, no matter whether you're really on them or not, you know, you. Uh... <laughs> I think that'll, I think that'll keep. Just so he's bigger than that other one. <clears throat> I think so. Yeah. He's a fatty, too. <laughs> Come on, guys. He's got a pound and a half through there. He's going to return to Lake Gunnersville. I believe this was him. Yeah, he was a he was a very close one, but he gone. So we officially have a limit now. No big ones though. What's going on here? Now Dane, out deeper. Really, one of the things that hurt that offshore bite throughout this tournament is and really a bunch down there not, with it. I don't know. Not a lot of current. Look. Might just and that lack of current out on that main lake. Anytime you're on the Tennessee River, they run that the water through the dam. Side. Really sets those fish up together. Get some feeding. Uh, I, he's just a little guy. Oof. Two pounder. Get back out to Tyler Rivette, getting a getting to fish in some Louisiana-like weather here. Good and warm, humid conditions here on Lake Gunnersville. Should feel a little bit at home.
There we go. I'm about to turn around, but I'll go straight. <laughs> that was the weirdest hook set ever. Like a three pounder. You can see the <sighs> fish starting to turn on again here at Lake Gunnersville. You've seen that every day of this event. Back to your leader, Caleb Kufal. It doesn't really matter. I mean, I. I'm exhausted and I couldn't get to sleep last night. I mean, so many things going through your head. Second year in the Elite Series, but lots of experience. A lot of different parts of the country, and there comes another possible keeper for Caleb Kufal. And he is way ahead of schedule, even oh, if it's it not the way we've no seen it. Like, he, he had, at 9.15 yesterday, had four fish for 10 pounds. The fact that he's over that with a limit today, and we're still like, when's he going to catch a big one? He's way ahead of schedule. Yeah, exactly. He is just staying the course, absolutely doing what he's done for four days now. They're not, but there's a bunch of brim beds over there, and then I went, I went over there yesterday, and there's none. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long day yesterday. Yeah. He should have thrown the wacky worm. Well, he was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe. Maybe. Uh, might help. Get out of there. Maybe. He's about the same size. Yeah, he spit up crawfish everywhere. Look at his mouth. Oh, oh crawfish. On a brim bed eating crawfish. He's confused. <laughs> Lost. Dude, that's gross. Gotta get that out of there. He's gonna get on if I Solid keep fish right there for Brandon Cobb. Concentrating on these bluegill beds where packs of largemouth kind of have amazingly oh. regrouped every day on these key stretches and you get a great look mm. what those largemouth are concentrating on bluegill spawning on a hard bottom real sandy hard bottom Well, I think one coming. So much eelgrass, I can't get my bait in there good. Um, they're so spooky. Um, it seems like when the tournament started, <clears throat> you know, there was a lot of shad spawn going on, or a little bit of shad spawn going on. That to me is going away, and the brim bed deal is getting. It's what's going on now. The problem is, is you know, so many of us have done it for so many days. Uh, what's left that you can see is, uh, I mean, they're spooky. Like there's, I don't know, six or eight swimming around in there right there. But with no wind and this eelgrass, it's just hard to present the bait. Um, I don't see any big ones here. There's one I wouldn't mind having, but uh, yeah, you know, it's just hard to get the bait in there and. Kind of behind schedule today. We haven't had a big bite. Um, frog deal is is uh, no good for me. So <clears throat> we've had an interesting morning, though. Seen a couple things that kind of got me excited. 
about the rest of the day. Just gonna keep on fishing. Just gotta come across the right one. Like right here, there's seven or eight swimming around. There's not big ones, but come around the right one where there's some big ones that maybe, maybe a fresh little wolf pack had moved up. But it's just tough to get, it's tough to get close to them. It's tough to, I mean, you look at the seal grass and you know, the millful and hydrilla is starting to top out. So it's just not as easy as it was. And it, and it hasn't been easy, don't get me wrong. Just, uh, I just haven't seen, and I don't know, I'm, I'm not seeing the big ones in the morning. And Tommy Kufal has uh, about a 13 and a half pound lead on Bass Track right now. He would be one of 11 anglers all time to win by double digits on the Elite Series, and that's because of his wow. two big days this week. That's strong, that's strong. Jason Christie started our show yesterday, if you remember, in low light with a good catch. He hasn't found the big ones yet today. On the other hand, Kufal won the sun got really high that's when he really went to work and Ronnie really the thing that he's done uh, the dominant performance he has done against some of the best shallow water fishermen that are in our top 10 in the history of the Bass Masters incredible incredible overachievement this week for the angler second year man from Wisconsin Caleb Kufal and he just keeps adding on and adding on You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Already into the last third of our season on the Bassmaster Elite Series, but after this event, we're going to pause and come back in about three weeks with the biggest single event in the sport, the Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. That's June 11th, 12th, and 13th for the first time ever. Fort Worth, Texas will be our host city. Very much looking forward to that. That is big time bass fishing country. Lake Ray Roberts, a lot of great lakes around the Dallas, Fort Worth metro area. But uh, man, oh man, we're looking forward to catching them big time. Big time there and have a big tournament and have a world champion. At the end of it all, Caleb Kufal. Looking ever more like the champion at the end of it all today, Championship Sunday on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And, oh man, Mark Zona, it's just, uh, I, you can't have enough superlative for what he's been able to do against this field. No doubt about it. Caleb Kufal has had a big time out on Lake Gunnersville. But you know what, Tommy Sanders? He's not going to be. I know you might find this strange. He is not going to be the Mercury move of the day. It's going to be right. second place angler Luke Palmer from Oklahoma and really all of his damage, not just today, but all week long, coming off of one point with the suspending jerk bait, mixing in a plastic worm, a 10 inch plastic worm here and there. But his damage early today, suspending jerk bait, clear water, little hard line of grass and seeing a lot of these fish on his front facing sonar. Yesterday, a slow morning for Palmer, he actually Caught a lot of fish, but the ones that he needed, yes, smart button, not the <laughs> case today. One hook. One hook in that one right there. Good quality in the live well for Palmer. The only one in our top 10 making that suspending jerk bait happen. Your Mercury of move of the day. Palmer just setting down on him. First fish, whoa, did that say 541 a.m.? Is this a night tournament? <laughs> it starts as a night tournament, that's right. Definitely, definitely capitalizing on that Jad spawn. Solid limit, and Tommy Sanders, it has him. Has him within 13 and a half pounds of our leader, unofficially sitting in yeah, second yeah, place. Go. Eighth Great to second, that is a Palmer. Yeah. Now watch this. Okay. You see where he's caught his fish so far today. I'm gonna call for it. Get ready for this. What? Yeah, right oh, there, yeah. bang, wow. oh yeah, he has done work right there on that little point that is your Mercury move of the day, Luke Palmer, Oklahoma angler, Bassmaster, Elite Series, Bassmaster. Alive. With special effects department exactly. making it come alive for that's, us right there, no doubt. That's it. Might have been the understatement of the century, Tommy.
Now, you can get right up here beside me if you want to. Luke Palmer back out to Tyler Rivet. Caught one just up the oh, way a few minutes ago. Gives the coronavirus. Oh. That'd be funny. You see people in big old like net suits, like. Oh my gosh. That's a good one. Came off in the boat. Put it on a cracker. Look at the tail. That's weird. He smoked it on the way in. I love those fights. Just like when you flip in there and it goes through and they just, yeah, the whole, the whole line just. Gets him up over 10, four fish now for Tyler Rivette back to Caleb Kufal. And Z Rivette was uh, explaining how his punching deal has just been a in and out. And he explained that in and out meant as soon as it hit and dropped to the bottom, he pulled it right back out. There's no point in letting it soak, just like Caleb Kufal with their rate of fall, like you mentioned earlier. Oh, it's a little one. I think it's a little guy. I saw him. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Just bringing the whole mat. Got reels falling off. There he is right there. He's still on there. Yeah, he's a little There's a fish in there somewhere. It doesn't Come look on, like buddy. it'll help Kufal. Get off of there. He's causing trouble. Notice the difference in the water color where Kufal is very clear water, having to be stealthy, trying to stay off his trolling motor as much as possible compared to where Tyler Rivette was up the lake. Back down to Shane Lineberger, making the dock game work today throughout this tournament. Catch a good one about 25 minutes ago. Man, the Georgia folks have showed up today. That's number five. <laughs> Just calm down, I'm gonna let you out this as soon as I can, I promise. Veteran Shane Lineberger having his best Elite Series event ever. North Carolina guy. Now getting that limit in the boat. I really think the surprising thing in that leaderboard so far today, very slow for Wes Logan, who's been as consistent as anybody in the field. The things to pick up, though, this is when it really started to fire on day three. Wes Logan and all the rest when we come back here. Championship Sunday, getting closer and closer to the midway point in this day. We'll be right back. The Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by Berkeley.
Find inspiration for your next outdoor adventure. Check out the new Go Outside community where you can learn more and share your journey in the outdoors. Go to Bassmaster.com slash go outside. Find us on social today. Looking at all of that grass and whatnot, that has been the main deal here at Lake Gunnersville in May. And I wanted to get to a couple of the key details when it comes to the performers this week. And that brings us to Raffle of Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. Obviously, fantasy isn't reality, but it kind of lines up somewhat in our Bassmaster events. And if you have picked Jason Christie, Chris Johnston, or Greg Hackney this week or this year, you're probably doing very well in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing because they are second, fourth, and sixth in Angler of the Year. Our leader, Seth Fighter, a phenomenal season, just missing, missing the cut here, but still keeping his lead, very good lead for him. His worst finish this year is 29th out of 100, and that is impressive, uh, an impressive feat. And also an impressive feat, it's, I've got three Caleb Kufals here because if he was to catch a 7-7 largemouth today, not only would he be the four-day leader and he would win and he's got the big lead, he would also take home the Big Bass Award and he would take home the Big Bag Award. He would do a clean sweep of all of the bonus points that you can get in Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. Tommy, you can get 300 for winning the event overall, but he could get 400 if he was to take home the Big Bass Award as well. And I wanted to also break down the lake. We've got a lot of different areas playing this week, but it's very interesting how this lake changes as the year goes on. I've got five areas kind of circled and marked. We've got the Spring Creek Bridge down here at the south side of the lake. Spring and Browns, those two places have been the key factors in March and in February, early in the year. And then I see right here Town Creek. That was where a Bassmaster Elite Series event was won in the, the month of April. Now, we haven't really had a, uh, an event in May in a while, and that would be what we're doing this week. June, right here in this region of the lake, and then October, even farther up. And it's because of this grass, the grass on Lake Gunnersville, that milfoil we've talked about, the eelgrass, it has allowed shallow water to prevail even as we get to the summer. And like we mentioned, that milfoil that Caleb Kufal was fishing in the morning, it positions those fish around the base of that grass when he flips in his Texas rig or his jig, they are all already on it and ready to ambush it. And then now we see his secondary area where he's culling up and really closing the door on this event punching through that grass. As soon as you get through that grass, you can bring your bait right back out because if you don't get a bite immediately, those fish are probably not going to bite. So a couple key regions of the lake, a couple key anglers, and a couple key techniques for Lake Gunnersville this week for the Elite Series event. Ronnie, usually this time of the event here on FS1, taking a look right there at a lot of that vegetation you were talking about. Usually you like to inform all the viewers here on FS1 of how your fantasy team did. I noticed you did not today, Ron. You know, I just wanted to share the love to those who deserve it. I, I just frankly don't deserve it this week, but I will say John Cruz uh, helped me greatly yesterday with how much he loves Gunnersville. I love John Cruz for that. Back out to Shane Leinberger live. Come out there, come out. Get in here. Not a giant, but it'll, I think it'll call one of them ones that's barely 15. Burger absolutely loves Gunner, Gunnersville, doesn't he, Tommy? Sure does. Having a fun week here, that's for sure. He's moved from eighth up to yeah. seventh position. Slow move up that leaderboard. Want to grab as many advancements as you can during the course of the day. You can't get much higher than Caleb Kufal. He, you know, wire to wire is one thing. This guy has only been out of the lead for just a few minutes on day two and a few minutes on day three. Staying in the lead for four days almost continuously is even more rare. Everybody loves Gunnersville. They really do. I love Gunnersville. Woo! Thank you, John Cruz. 
Excellent rendition of that uh, old favorite. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and one of the themes throughout this tournament, a lot of times when we fish Gunnersville this time around, guys have a milk run of several areas. Usually this time of year, offshore near the main river channel, main lake, deeper. The one real common theme of the anglers that made it to today, getting in one area and absolutely picking it to pieces. One or at most like Kufal, two areas, didn't see a lot of running around in this tournament. And the other thing that I think was really amazing about this tournament, Ronnie, was how these shallow water areas have reloaded every single day so far because they're not, look, Kufal's in a big area right there, but the majority of his damage, there, there are spots within a spot, like where he did the bulk of his damage right outside of Goose Pond. Man, it's a 30 to 40 yard stretch at most and all, like Brandon Cobb, he has fished a 100 yard stretch all week long. Z, just observing those two guys and, and normally when we have events like that, it seems like it's gotta be something to do with the bottom hardness or what something is different in that. And that might be the deal. The fish are coming in to spawn. Now they're leaving. They're going to stop on that grass. Maybe there's some brim beds around a shad spawn going on. It definitely has kept a lot more of these fish shallow compared to past years at Gunnersville where the grass wasn't as prevalent. Yeah, and we're the guys that you're looking at on your screen right there. They were benefited by that. You know, the reason they're fishing today, they were benefited by that really, really late spring going into summertime to where the bulk of these fish, the bulk of the population stayed shallow and hasn't made its way offshore where guys like Chris Zeldane is at, or you would see more guys in the top 10 fishing offshore. And the other thing about Gunnersville this time around, guys like Jason Christie, Brandon Cobb, being able to see these bluegill beds in this gin clear water, look in years past, you would never, you could see bluegill beds a little bit here and there, but they stick out like a sore thumb now with the clarity of the water. Tommy, you've been, we've we've had 26 events at, at, for Bassmaster competition at Lake Gunnersville. You've probably seen at least a dozen of those. It's changed a lot. We've always had grass at Gunnersville, and then there was a time where it went away. Fishing, it took 100 pounds to win. Sometimes it's 80, and it's been back and forth mm -hmm. those cycles, and it's always been pressured. One of the most, if not the most, pressured lake in the country, tournaments-wise, and to see the grass really be non-existent, maybe four or five years ago, yeah. uh, you know, it, it was kind of on the lower end of grass population. To see it come back as strongly as it has with all the storms, most things that would cause it to wither away, it has made it thrive here over the last 10 months, it seems. It is kind of true. Most most plakes, most big lakes we go to have a lot of grass. It's cyclical. It's, it goes yep. through cycles. And well, it usually always comes back. Which is a little refreshing to see that how normally a tournament in Gunnersville would be dominated in May or June offshore. And it will be, you know, next month, those things like Zona was saying, offshore fish will start to gather up. But this grass element will keep a lot of those offshore anglers shallow because this is where they want to be. Just picking up with us, that gentleman in the upper left right there, Caleb Kufall of Wisconsin, has put on a dominant performance, not just for one day, but all four days of fishing here at Lake Gunnersville. Gosh, it's so strange, though, Tommy. Of all of those tournaments that we've covered here, usually in May, it would really be nine out of ten of the anglers would be offshore, deep cranking, deep worming, swim baiting. Boy, this time around to have nine out of 10 of them fishing shallow, it, like Ronnie said, very refreshing to see that. Oh, here we go. I think it's time. 
Oh, exactly right. And you know what? A little bit of controversy in this power pole replay today. One would think, seeing Caleb Kufal is leading by like 37 pounds, that he might be the power pole replay today. Well, you know what? He's not. Luke Palmer with a slow, slow morning on day number three. Not the case today. Landing back on him. Definitely catching the right ones. And so far today, officially, he has some of the, yes, sir. Really the biggest ones that we've <laughs> seen. Luke Palmer barely Hook. skin hooking that one right What's there. <laughs> Luke Palmer from Oklahoma. You are the powerful replay of the day, my friend. Great job, great job today. Best day of all for Luke Palmer, the Oklahoma angler, like Jason Christie, loves being a Bassmaster Elite Series angler. My first memory of Bassmasters is I, you know, I watched a lot of it growing up on Saturday mornings. I'd get up where most kids were watching, you know, cartoons. I was sitting there waiting for Bassmaster to come on. But I was actually fishing a little community lake there at, at Colgate where I'm from. And I had a guy, I watched him, he was going down the bank and he was just jacking his fish, just wham, wham, wham. I was thinking, man, what is he doing? He come up and he gave me a, he was catching on a smoking purple tooth. And he fished for Man's Bait Company, and that's all he said. And I remember looking across the lake and seeing his boat and truck, and then that was the last I seen him. But it, it kind of lit a fire in me then that, hey, these guys are on a different level. I want to get to that. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Today, the best NASCAR season ever continues as the Cup Series makes its long-awaited debut at the Circuit of the Americas Road Course in Austin, Texas. Green flag drops at 2.30 Eastern right here on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Tough right there, taking a look at Tyler Rivette, one of the anglers that has made it happen up the lake here on Lake Gunnersville, outside of Scottsboro, Alabama. Final day action, and it has been a beat down by Wisconsin angler Caleb Kufal. There's your TH Marine weather watch right now, 75 degrees. It will get warmer, considerably warmer today, bumping up against the 90s, mostly sunny. As you can see, the wind's calm, as you can see. Stable weather. Yeah. <laughs> We haven't seen that um, much yeah. this year, Tom. Where are we? We've, we've never encountered <laughs> Where's that. Where's the we don't know flooding? What to do. I want to see some of that. <laughs> like one of the only tournaments this whole season we have not had a postponement due to bad weather. Been a great week here on Lake Gunnersville. Going to slide way up the lake. Greg Hackney said he has not seen a single angler competitor all week long. He has ran so far up Gunnersville. Greg Hackney live. I mean. It's going to make you keep watching me patiently from behind. <laughs> That's exactly what. That's a big one. Come on, baby. Come on. I guess it's just every cast now. <laughs> Look how long that sucker is. That may be like the longest fish for his size I've ever caught. Look at that. That's crazy. That's the way I thought I was going to start looking if we didn't start catching something. Boy, he was having a time right there, not really paying attention to what was going on, but <laughs> Let it absolutely soak a cracked him. Greg Hackney, started to Greg Hackney getting away from a lot of his competition this week, and really the only day that day number one, and just over 15 pounds, he said he was really disappointed, thought he could catch a big stringer the first day of this tournament. Oh. oh, hey. 
all of our viewers we talked about a couple weeks ago that actually is not a grebe right there um, yeah you're right it's a butterfly the oh, okay. uh okay boy it is fun to watch a guy like greg hackney if you don't follow the Bassmaster elite series this style fishing he is one of the most powerful in the country at doing this returning to the elite series qualifying this past open season in 2020 he now has a second a seventh a 16th oh, and another top to 10 this week fish. as well yeah i mean i'm like wow that's fun i mean that was a little bit of fun there for a little bit again And really, the two tournaments that, yeah. man, you like thought fun. he was going to So see, when it's him. fun for me, it's fun for you. But when it sucks for me, it even sucks worse for you. <laughs> uh. They were places that he had already oh. won in his career. Sabine it's and like Pickwick, the only missed cuts left. he has. I mean, Crazy. I exactly 20 out of a stretch like that. You know what I mean? I keep thinking that's going to happen. Not seen him yet today. Brandon Cobb. Brandon Cobb, Luke Palmer, Wes Logan, three anglers fishing today that also made it last fall in October. Totally different time of year, but very similar patterns fishing that grass with these, you know, whether you're frogging, punching, flipping. Some of these fish are incredibly shallow. The inside line of the grass up on the bank. Like you can't even see them. That is a great shot right there with how clear that water is. Brandon Cobb is fishing. A little guy. Coming right down that brim bed there. One pounder. And people watching on Fox Sports 1 may not know what brim beds are or if they're going to be at our next event or future events, but it's kind of all in sync. The bass start to spawn in that March, April time period, at least in the south and whatnot. And then the shad spawn starts up late April, early May when the bass are finishing up. And the bluegill also start right around that same time, right, Z? And they'll, they'll go a little bit longer than the shad spawn probably does. Yeah, and really what ends up happening uh, is you'll also see it go all the way into you know, states like Arkansas. Go. You'll see a, a bluegill spawn all the way into July, sometimes August. And really what it does this time of year is, like you said, the largemouth are finishing their reproductive cycle. It just keeps them up there another two or three weeks generally after, you know, they complete their spawning. Then they focus on, you know, getting energy back and feeding on those shallow bluegill. And it's kind of like a, I guess, a, a carnival there. They get to just hang out and feed without much effort because the bait comes to them where they're already at. I think Christy, especially looking at the weights today, Christy really nailed it. He said, you know, there's only so many you can catch, and the ones that are left, you know, they are pretty conditioned for the throttling that these small areas have received this week. Guy on your left, Caleb Kufal. He's the man in charge here if you're just picking up with us. A lot of folks going outside today. Lord, oh, oh yeah. Summer day here in Northeast Alabama. There. Alabama. No boat, no problem, Tommy. Hey. 
enjoying the shade, enjoying the fish, and enjoying going he outside. Is, he's Good been ball. outside and hammering on the panfish today. Love it. That one won't go on Bass Track, but we'll keep you updated on that derby at the bridge. Okay, what a place. Lake Gunnersville and Caleb Kufall again. What a performance. Wire to wire. Getting closer and closer to having a shutdown moment here if it hasn't happened already. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. A little bit more of our live coverage left to go here at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, though. The live coverage continues over at Bassmaster.com. Dave and Davey. Dave Mercer, Davey Height picking up the baton. Carrying it forward as we get closer and closer to the end of Championship Sunday, a day that's all about Caleb Kufal putting the finishing touches on only the 11th, could be, could only be. the 11th double digit yeah. victory. And it may be the trip. most the most financially prosperous one with him burning about $14 worth of gas to get a $100,000 payday for this week. Let's throw to it right now. Let's get after our Yamaha midday report. And uh, the whole story is that man, Caleb Kufal, what a dominating performance here on Lake Gunnersville. And today, just sort of getting it all buttoned up. Getting a lot of texts from some friends in Wisconsin. Caleb Kufal might be the first ever Wisconsin angler to win a Bassmaster Elite Series tournament. And Ronnie, Tommy, you, you guys know this, man. Every single Bassmaster Elite Series win is special. But what we've watched him do in two very, very well-known areas of Lake Gunnersville, it, it's a, honestly an unbelievable performance for the simple fact he needed to outfish some of the best in the game at shallow water fishing. And this is Lake Gunnersville 101, just flipping hydrilla, Flipping mats, three quarter, one ounce weights, Zoom Z hog, and a dirty jig that he was using back in that mill foil. The Yamaha midday report, unbelievable performance from Caleb Kufal. Get back live out on the water with Caleb right now. His lead 13 9, biggest lead ever so far in this tournament for him. Come here, buddy. Ah, I got him. Yeah, boy. Woo! <laughs> That's what we needed. Yes. Not really. Not needed, no. <laughs> nope. Boom. Oh, man. That'll get you excited. Showing off at this point. What oh, a beatdown. He was caught up for. Yo. A little bit. Come on, bro. That's awesome, dude. What goes? 2 4? Or... And you absolutely knew that was eventually coming. Sure. And one other, other thing, you got to give a big hats off to Caleb Kufal. You lose fish doing this. Every now and then, you're going you're gonna to mess up one or two of them. His execution throughout oh. this tournament is exactly why he's in the position he is in right now. And it's so refreshing to see this, even though it has been a dominating performance, not to wither on the final day and just coast to a, to get a fish like that, maybe another one, and really put your stamp, know that you did your job and not just come in with 9 or 10 pounds on the final day and call it good. Uh, it's going to do a lot for him in his career. No lack of confidence, no doubts in his mind, no. apparently. Not that, he would, not that he would talk about anyway, just completely committed to what he was doing and the basic fundamentals biggest, executed perfectly. Biggest day of his career by far and lived up to it, man. He was nervous last night, you could tell in his voice. He said, gosh, I don't want to go out and blank on, uh, on FS1. Mm. I forget now. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is just this 
little thing here right here has been uh, been my best mat. Finding this place, uh, you know, all the way through here, I fished the whole thing in practice and I caught one fish and it was right here, but it was a six pounder. And uh, I think I caught, I caught a 511 here on the first day. Um, and then I caught, I caught my last fish here yesterday. So, I mean, it's been, you know, that was a four and a quarter, and I think I caught one other one here yesterday too. That was like a high threes or something. You catch two here right behind that log, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I said yesterday coming up to it, I'm like, "There's a big one in there," you know. And sure enough, you know, you catch like a four and a quarter. So, you know, there. Maybe we can get another one out of there. But it seems like the, the just just this one mat. You know, you go up, go up that way a little ways. It's like you can't get bit on any of that stuff unless you you go way down there and and reach the juice where we caught most of those other ones yesterday. But man, I, I needed that fish so bad though, just to you know, you you never know. But you know, you don't want to give it away on the last day. I should have bumped his lead up to around 15 pounds at this point in the proceedings right now. It's just, uh, man, it's, it's getting severe. We did everything we could on days two, three, and four to create any kind of drama and every single day, Tommy, we said it yesterday. I mean, four pounder. Caleb Kufal has shut the field and us down about this time of day. Uh, As well he four, should have. Four and a half. Just, Tommy, now he's in the range of if it's 15.9, if he gets to 15.9, he will be the second largest winning Man, weight in Elite Series history if he too. gets over he that was, mark. Wow. He was in Elite Series history. Yes, yeah. and what for the only one Lake, better yeah. was Lake Fork last fall with Patrick Walters. Unbelievable. We've and a this. time of year when yeah. you're in post-spawn, a, a time of year where generally, we talked about this on days one and two, our tournaments this time of year are generally horse races to the last hour, which makes it so, so unique what he has done. Yeah, and normally those blowouts are doing something totally different like Walters last year. He's doing the same thing as a lot of guys. It's crazy. Well, the weigh-in, making it all official, that happens at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Bassmaster.com. You definitely want to check that out. Uh, one of the most unforgettable performances that will live in history and that's rich history of Lake Gunnersville right here. Man, oh man, that is with something unbelievable that we have witnessed. And huge thanks to everybody that has here. watched this tournament oh, this me. weekend on FS1. Yeah, the one thing you can say, Tommy Sanders, we got to talk about it really pretty fast. much every time we have come to Lake Gunnersville. Unbelievable performance from that angler right there, Caleb Kufal, but the star always is Lake Gunnersville. This lake always shows up for the Bassmaster Elite Series. We thank you so much for being with us today for Bassmaster Live. Coming up next, NASCAR Cup Series qualifying from the Circuit of the Americas in Austin. Stay tuned for that. The next time we see you, the Elite Series takes a break. We will see you at the World Championship, the Bassmaster Classic. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Spectacular sunny Sunday afternoon, championship Sunday, my favorite day of the week. But I mean, it, 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 there's a guy that, that just may just be destroying my favorite day. I mean, Davey Hyde, can this really be happening? I mean, I, in over a decade, I just missed a couple of ways. One of them was the third biggest bag in Bassmaster history. The other one was the come from behind win from the kid. And then they bring me back from this blowout. Unbelievable what Caleb Kupal is doing. It's unbelievable here this week, but let's have a look 
at our playing field. We are in the great state of Alabama, the birth state of the Bassmasters. And you see our playing field right there. You're very familiar with it. 69,000 acres of fish filled with water and one angler. One angler has absolutely dominated this all week long, Davey Height. How rare is what Caleb Kufal is preparing to do here? Well, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like it, to be honest with you, because he's not fishing any, I'm going to call it secret places or secret holes. He's not using any secret baits that these other anglers don't have. He's got two places that he's caught all of his fish. One of them primarily milfoil, and the other one some matted vegetation. And he is just out fishing the field, and that's all it is to it. There are no seekers at Gunnerfield. We've been here so many times. There's so many tournaments. I think there's about four or five today. But Caleb Kufal is absolutely just fishing lights out. And he's putting everybody in the boat, basically. Unbelievably calm, cool, collected, and getting it done. But let's jump into our Toyota Midday Report. And his closest pursuer right there, the C-O-double-B, Brandon Cobb, a two-time Elite Series winner. A man so calm this morning, so jovial on the dock. You know the tap on the shoulder game and then you run past that's what he did to me this morning. That's how relaxed he was. Well, the great thing uh, when I've watched Brandon Cobb fish over the last few years, he has fun every day out there. And you can tell that. And it's just not a lot of pressure, not a lot of nerves. He has fun. And, and he really seems to like this time of the year. He, he loves to fish where some fish are on the bed, some fish are post-spawn, maybe in a few pre-spawn like that one right there. Just look. But he just goes out and has fun. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, Dave, it's it's not easy to just have fun when you go fishing when so much pressure is on you. A big entry fee, trying to make the classic, trying to win AOI, trying to stay in the leagues, all those things. But Brandon Cobb has not let that affect him. He just goes out and fishes and has fun every single day. This is a super unique championship Sunday because really I can't overstate how rare the vibe on the dock was. Just how jovial and how relaxed everybody was because really they know they're not really in control of their own destiny. But it's great to see Luke Palmer back in the mix here this week. It really is, especially, I mean, he's a, a good fisherman, a, a fun person to be around, a, a, just a great, genuine person. And seeing him lose all those fish yesterday morning, he lost four or five really key fish yesterday morning there's jumping off the side of the boat and uh, he, he kept his head up and had a decent day yesterday today having a good day unofficial with a little over 15 pounds almost 16 pounds actually the only one we've really seen in the field using a jerk bait is forward facing sonar uh, he's been able to make that work but yesterday losing those key fish uh, really hurt him well, the guy that really, it's going to be down to the wire, let's be honest. This is a tight competition, and anything can happen. Can it, Davey? I, Caleb Kufal is destroying everything. Well, I, I hate to see him destroy the field, uh, you know, with the big lead that he's got right now. But I will say, with Tommy Sanderson, I did a preview of this event. We said it would take 80 pounds to win, and he's right there right now. But the way he's been catching them each and every day, uh, if, if he fishes hard from now until check-in, which I'm sure he will, heck, he might get closer to 90 pounds, which will really be phenomenal. And I, I can't emphasize enough, we saw the first day, uh, you talked with Corey Johnson, I did too. He was actually in that same area with Caleb Kufal. Caleb put the fish in the boat, Corey lost too many fish, and it was, it, you know, you've got to put those fish in the boat, but if you've never fished like this, punches, vegetation, you're just, it's like a given yeah, that you're going to lose a good number of fish. And he has not done Ooh, that yes. this week. What he has done is unbelievable and so rare. I can't overstate that enough. To lead an Elite Series event wire to wire, not just day to day, but literally the first hour of the first day. It's unfathomable and so rarely seen. And to do it here on one of the most publicly fished, one of the the most pressured bodies of water in America. Doing things that everybody else is doing is unheard of. Yeah, you have to find the good areas. But the other thing, if you do locate the fish, you got to catch them. You got to put them in the boat. Mother Nature has actually been, in my opinion, kind, very kind. Everything has worked out for him. He had two areas in there. He has been flipping a jig and his creature bait, a Zoom Z-Hog. But only those two areas and with the wind and with the conditions that we've had this week they're very different one very protected with mid and the other one matted vegetation 
the two windy days that protected area served him well yesterday and today this open water matted vegetation has been his best bet over to luke palmer a two-time classic qualifier Well, it started out better than yesterday. Uh, stink. I'm not paying attention. I don't think it was a fish. Got excited. Put me on live. Didn't know what to do with my hands. But now it started out okay. Uh, I just I think my my jerk bait stuff is just kind of it's kind of fizzling out for me, especially when I don't have any wind. Uh, if I would have would have had some wind today. I probably would go ahead and stick with it. But I had some bites punching in practice, and I just, I couldn't get off the jerk bait yesterday. So I, and I, I came up through here and punched a little bit yesterday late, but I was in a daggum fizzle, fazzle, fuzzle, whatever you want to say, what was going on with my head. But I, uh, I said today, once if I could catch a limit, that I was going to come and just go punching. That's what I enjoy doing. Uh, and I, I just kind of got keyed in on the jerk bait and the top water in practice and didn't really get dialed in on this. So it just kind of having to go and fish a little bit and wanted to do something different. So I got a, a decent little limit in there. I'd like to catch me a couple five pounders to move on up a little bit, but we'll see. I mean, I got, it's 10 o'clock now. I got plenty of time to to get another fish in the box or two and hopefully catch a seven or eight pounder. I'd like to I'd like to catch a big and punch and that'd be kind of fun. I like flipping one hard, that'd be all right. Davey, is that the story of this season or at least they this you know, last stretch, today? just not getting locked into pre-fish too much? They all went back shopping today? That's an upgrade. <laughs> he was hooked. Hammer. <laughs> Let's see how much. I think it's bigger than the other two I got too. No, I got that two five. Yeah, Dave, that's that's a great question. I really think talking to Caleb yesterday so much, uh, I really tried to you know, figure out how can he be doing what he's doing. And he didn't have a good practice. The conditions, were, it was very windy, a lot of clouds, and and just those were not good conditions for flipping that mill full, not good conditions for flipping these mats. Like we see, Rivet is doing the same thing here. It, it really really um, came down to that's common. what he does that's what he loves to do he loves to have that flipping stick in his hand and he went out that first morning hoping that things might get better looking at the forecast but but really he said he was most nervous the very first morning and we saw him i mean he had 19 pounds in no time led the led the event in the first hour and has never given it up so he certainly didn't have much to be nervous about but he only caught a few fish in the area that has been best for him, and he never went back to it after the first day of practice. Time to get Zell dangerous. Yeah, it's 10-15. Uh, uh, we check in at 2, so I got, I got four hours or so, and I got four fish in the live well. And um, I'm just kind of, what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of matching the conditions that we have. I mean, it is slick, calm, uh, sunny. And I've been fishing offshore, uh, you know, 90% of the time. And then I'll dip in shallow just 10% of the time. And like four, let's see, like four out of five offshore spots I have are just like, this is just matted with eel grass. And it, it just makes it unfishable. 
So after the you know heavy winds we've had over the last couple of days, all this eelgrass gets uprooted, all the boat traffic uproots this eelgrass like this and it sends it down the river. And when it sends it down the river and it floats on top of those ledges I'm fishing out in 20 feet of water, you can't make a, ca a cast without getting your bait fouled up. So um, we we're fortunate enough to catch a couple decent ones this morning on my main spot. Um, I will end there, but in the meantime, I'm just gonna kind of poke around shallow and then kind of look for new ledge stuff. Um, but without wind or without current, it just makes it super hard for those ledge fish to really get on those shell bars that I'm looking for, those shell ledges that I'm looking for. Um, on day two, where I caught them really good, like every single cast for about an hour, uh, the wind was blowing it right onto a ledge and it was, I mean, it was awesome. But today we're not gonna have any wind no current so it just makes it really hard to uh to pinpoint those schools of fish so i'm gonna catch i'm gonna try to catch one right here in this milfoil stretch where i had uh glide bait bites in practice when the wind was blowing in here um so i'm just gonna flip around on day two i caught a couple decent ones in here flipping and then i'm gonna head back out to the ledges i mean my my best shot at a giant bag is gonna be out there but that that eelgrass needs to clear up if uh if i have a chance So that's exactly what we were talking about. Uh, they're just, they don't generate much on a Sunday. Um, the water's clear. You really need that water to be moving to uh, get those fish out on the edge. And the wind, I mean, it, it couldn't, you couldn't draw it up any worse for those offshore fishermen because as this tournament progressed, they were hoping for more fish to move offshore and they just haven't done that. And, and when they are offshore, more fish have moved out there, but they're so hard to catch because you don't have that wind to, to break up that light penetration. Zaldane making another championship Sunday appearance here. Spoon. And this is uh, going a long way for him as he tries to right the ship after a tough, uncharacteristically tough start to the season. Yeah, it's just, I mean, he had a plan. He loves to fish offshore and the, the conditions just, just hasn't been good for that. And, you know, just like we we're talking about, Caleb Kufal does. You got to do what you do for the most part. Um, if you're not good at something, you need to really try to get better at that. But maybe not during the competition days, during the off season, or in between events. But to win an elite series event, you have to be very comfortable with what you're doing and how you're how you're presenting those baits and, and where you're fishing. And Chris Aldain loves to fish deeper and loves to fish offshore. But with these conditions like this, he even though it's not really what he wants to do, even he knows he's got to get a flipping stick out and fish that vegetation. Had an embarrassing moment with Zaldane this morning at takeoff. Got to let you in on it. Unbelievable. I mean, uh, we were having a conversation and he was talking about how he had, had a giant bag. And I literally had an unplanned stutter and I said, you got to get a ju ju giant bag. And, and then I, he started to walk away and I called him back panicked. I'm like, I, I don't want him to think I'm that weird or that I mean, it's obnoxious enough on stage. You can't say it socially. But Chris Aldane trying to get it, move up that leaderboard. But the problem is at the top of that leaderboard, a giant lead. Look at that. It looks fake. It's like it's like we're playing a video game. It's, it's like we're playing Bassmaster Fishing 2022, which is coming out this fall. But this is real life, ladies and gentlemen the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Gunnersville, and Caleb Kufal is conquering it. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. On one of the most bizarre championship Sundays in recent memory, a lake where you expect it to be super tight. You know, the competition, the leaderboard's supposed to be tight. And like I said, Davey, how you look at that leaderboard, it doesn't even look real. It really doesn't. And if you're just tuning in and haven't watched a lot of championship Sundays or sometimes Mondays here on the Bassmaster League Series, that is not what we normally look at. A, a look at a 15 pound lead, especially, especially post fall. Some of these fish are still spawning, but when you, this time of year, it's usually only ounces between the top two or three angles. Well, I said it was bizarre, but it's about to get a little bit more bizarre. 
on the line, B&W trailer hitches on the line. Uh, we have a watch party going on. And as you can see, Lee Livesey, Corey Johnston, and Matt Robertson, what what are you guys doing? Oh, that's kind of a loaded question. But uh, <laughs> right now we're just uh, we're having to roll over to the expo. So we're uh, just kind of getting things packed up. And we're going to head over to the expo and maybe sign a few autographs and hang out with some fans. So, so I've got to ask you guys this because when I was fishing the Elite Series, when I would watch, the first day I would actually get to watch Bassmaster Live, which oftentimes would be on day three, but when I would first see it, something would all, I'd go, oh, are you kidding me? Did I miss that? So what jumps out at any one of you three, or maybe all three of you, what jumps out that you're seeing what Caleb Summer, I mean, excuse me, Kufal is doing, does that jump out like, oh, heck, how did I miss that? Well, yeah, actually, Kupal and I fished side by side the first first couple days, and you know he he had there's one little special area where um, he was the fish were really concentrated. I found that in practice, and I fished a shad spawn, and and he was in there first thing, and he put a beating on him in front of me. But uh, definitely watching all these guys flipping, punching, frogging, um, I kind of totally missed the boat on the frogging and punching stuff. Yeah, I tried a lot uh, guys, of that stuff. I frog and i wouldn't punch that's kind of where i went wrong i think matt how about you well man i kind of put all my eggs in one basket i assume this light in the year i know some of them were still still spawning but i assume there'd be uh, some big schools big schools out offshore i put all my eggs in one basket went offshore fishing uh throwing a big plug and man I and mean, at least one person made the top 10 fishing out in deep. Kind of happy to see that. But it's good to see the guys doing a mixture of things, you know, knowing that there wasn't one certain thing you missed that uh, uh, you see a lot of guys doing a lot of different stuff. Well, Matt, congratulations on the driveway, number one. Number two, is this the closest you three have ever stood together in, in mankind? And, Corey, why did you let – Caleb Kufal cave your skull in on day number one. <laughs> well, for one, Matt's a bit of a creepy dude. And he tries to cuddle up. So, uh, you know, he gets a little too close. But uh, It got a little strange last night. Not gonna lie. Um, but uh, Caleb, I mean, he was just on the juice, and there's there's no no way around it. He beat my face in. Got one right now. Uh, Caleb Kufal is still beating you, even though you're not competing. He's hooked up right now. I'll let you guys get back to, well, let's be honest, drinking. We'll see you a little later, and let's <laughs> check in with our tournament leader, Caleb Kufal. Still punishing the competition. That's a good when one is though. enough enough? All right. Yeah, he's got to be close to four, huh? Gotta be honest, Davey, a little upset that our tournament leader, I know this is totally unprofessional, interrupted that party because I think we were just, just getting started. So Caleb, some of our all, gosh, why did I say that? Kufo. <laughs> I guess because we had lunch with, with the other Caleb yesterday. Well, I mean, maybe so. If this guy's just been leading the event for four days now. But the, he got started on day one, and I, I can't say this enough. For him to catch over 27 pounds right now on Guntersville was impressive. But 21, 23, and it looks like he's headed to another 20-pound stringer is incredible. Moments ago with Hackney. Plop, plop, boom. I don't believe that's the same one. That's not the one that waked over to it, I don't think. I don't think he's going to. Say that again. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, we like to mix it up every day, you know. Watch it. 
see Greg Hackney here using a top water frog. We haven't seen him doing that. I think that's what he was. Oh, great camera work there. That's awesome camera work there. You can see that fish inhale that frog. But he's mixing it up. We've seen him with a flipping stick in his hand, punching primarily. He got in this one area, and we've seen him catch several fish. And then he, instead of just leaving, he just mixed it up a little bit with baits and started fishing shallower to pay it off for him. What? I wanted to do that. Still not much change. I plinked out a few more. You know, I got a limit, cold one time. And uh, we just kind of experimenting a little bit. I'm kind of trying some, or really just expanding my water more, not really experimenting. And uh, these fish in here seem to be more toward, it's the first place I've had them like that. They seem to be out closer to the river. You know, they weren't all the way out there to the river, but they were uh, a lot closer. So there's a little bit of isolated stuff out here in the mouth. And so I thought, well, I'll hit that. And I saw a fish blow up out there. So go out there and hit that. And then we're going in a new back. Well, actually, it's not new. We started in it yesterday morning, but I didn't stay in there long. We rolled. I'm going to go in there. I have not. Uh... I just don't feel like rerunning water today, you know. Greg Hackney, man, <laughs> you know it, it, what was unique this morning, Davey, on the dock was was me and Jo kind of joked about how relaxed everybody was, but it always it, it also seems like it's becoming the same cast of characters every week. I mean, Hackney and West Logan passed each other; they gave each other knuckles, a cool moment, and Hackney patted him on the back, and he said every sunday man and it's just cool to to yeah. see the brotherhood and to just oh yeah yeah that's absolutely what you want but uh I, i'll say this even though Kufal had a big lead those guys show up to win they, they're, they're thinking he he can stumble he can stumble i i got a chance to win this that's a mentality a of uh you know a greg hackney a jason christie certainly west logan we saw that with him in the last event so yeah, it's all fun and shoulder tapping, but when it gets right down to it, they they, they want to win. Yeah. Hair longer, actually. I know it's all about collecting titles and that sort of stuff, but I'm going to just say it for every Bassmaster fan that watches every single week. Greg Hackney, the way he catches bass, the, the areas he fishes, the way he catches, I mean, it just makes you want to do it. You know what I mean? It, it literally is a postcard. His hook set, the sounds, the noises. Yeah, there's something about uh, top water fishing, time. but there's also something about power like fishing, flipping matted fish. vegetation, because you know everybody it's going to be a challenge. You know, just, you know, deep water fishing with drop shots and that sort of thing. You know, you hook up and you normally land those fish. It's always a big challenge to put these fish in the boat. Well, the challenge is that a giant, giant challenge, and that is to chase down our tournament leader. He took the lead on day number one in the very first hour of competition, and it does not look like anybody is getting anywhere near to him because every single time I look at that, 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 I mean, you know, it's like the kid, like, oh, I'm playing baseball. I scored 100 runs today. It's always a lie and a dream, but it's real. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. This is the seventh championship Sunday of the season and trying to decide who our champion is, but all of this leads to something that is the Bassmaster Classic and that of course is our angler of the year race. And looking at Greg Hackney, who is definitely in the mix there. He's making a little move here. He's been in that one area for a couple hours and, and, and really had a lot of success there, catching some punching and some on a frog. Rick Hackney on the move. And the question is, can anybody make a move, not just in this tournament, but in our skier boats, angler of the year watch. You look right there. 
On top of that, another runaway, maybe. Seth Fighter, but right behind him, Jason Christie, who is on the water today and can control his own destiny just a little bit, but not enough points today. No, not enough, but he made up a good many this tournament, so we'll just have to see with two more events to go, and we heard him talking about it uh, on day two, that if Seth Fighter catches him. He's going out of the bank looking. Catches him well, nobody can take the lead from him. I thought I needed to run some some new stuff, and I haven't caught a fish since I left the area that I've been fishing, so I caught a couple flipping uh, deep hydrilla in practice. I think that I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna hit one more spot, and then I might run back through that deep hydrilla because it's in a good spot. I mean, like, it's, it's um, kind of a mouth of a bay. I'm thinking maybe that this this thing's going away and something like that might be uh, good. It won't take me 20, 30 minutes to go through it. Uh, yeah, just try that. I mean, try something, something else. You know, it's slick calm, which you'd think I'd be able to see better. I don't know, the water's just got like an algae tint to it. And I want to be close to that main river. As you said, Davey, right? little bites, little chunks. I mean, you can't uh, anger. The year is a season long title. And man, it, even with fighters lead and, and fighter said it yesterday on stage. And I don't think he's just saying that he knows that. I mean, he's a not just a angler, but he's a historian of the sport. I mean, Fighter is its generational historian. His dad is too. And, and man, they, they know how quick it can slip away. And we saw it happen with Jason Christie just a few years ago. Yes, we did. And he hasn't forgotten it. And I'm sure he's thinking about, hey, it happened to me. It could happen to Seth Fighter. And Seth knows that. I mean, you can still have a good event and lose 15 or 20 points uh, in each event. I mean, you could, if Jason Christie has a top five and Seth Fighter has a good event at 25th. I mean, you consider that a good event. I mean, you're you're well in the money, but if you lose, if he loses 20 few points, I, I think it, when I was looking at there, it's about 45 points or so. So uh, in two events, it certainly could happen. This footage of Christie earlier today, obviously, and as we talked about those angler of the year battles, the things to keep in mind, and I think honestly why you see it so often as we head north, is it's real easy to slip trying to be safe yes. on tight tournaments like that. You know, how do you play it safe in Waddington? Well, I, yeah, I, I just don't think you can. Uh, and that's, you know, you're, you're spot on, Dave. I, mean, I don't think you can. You've got to go fish like you're trying to win the event because the guys behind you are too good to, you know, to play it safe because they're not going to play it safe. And, and you look at uh, Jason Christie's track record, uh, <laughs> he doesn't have very many what I would call bad tournaments. And for him, a bad tournament is not, not to make the top 50. So we'll just have to see. But what he was talking about just a few minutes ago with these fish, what's kind of going away is those shallow fish and they're going out. But most of them aren't going all the way out to the river ledges, those shell beds. They're going out to a little bit deeper vegetation. All the way from the bayou to the Bassmasters, Tyler Ruvat. Hmm. I feel help. Short and fat. <sighs> Feels like me after this week. Yeah, it's gonna call. Don't we have a two pounder in there? Yep. Six. Oh, I'm just staring. Let's 
So we talked about this a little bit yesterday, Dave. It's just un unbelievable to me. You see good fishermen. It looks like they're doing the same thing that Caleb Kufal is doing. But when they set the hook, it's a different size fish that comes out of the water. I mean, he, he's catching a lot of three and a half to four and a half pound fish, and a lot of these other anglers are catching two and a half to three, occasionally a better fish, but it's just like different. It's like it's a different age class that he's fishing for. It's exactly that, a new age in fishing, Davey. He's got the cheat coats, basically. I mean, you play video games enough, you know they're out there, the cheat codes. You can put in a special code and, you know, you catch bigger fish than anybody. You, you win the tournament every single time. And Caleb Kufal has the cheat codes to Lake Gunnersville this week. And let's keep in mind, everybody looking like, how is he outfishing Greg Hackney? How is he outfishing all these guys? There was a time. There was a tournament where Greg Hackney was Caleb Kufal. You know what sure. I mean? And, J and Jason Christie was Caleb Kufal. Sure. This could be one of the most tremendous coming out parties. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Only the future will tell. So so talking, and you know, I learn more about it every time you talk with someone. And I spent some time one-on-one -on -one with him yesterday. He qualified in his first year on the Opens. In four events, he had a first and a second. I mean, yeah. he's this is his first good day on the water uh but like you said he's just coming out party in the Bassmaster leagues and he's really had a stable climb i think you know what i mean i we're gonna have to check him with the stat rat ronnie moore i know he's got it all down and suits but but if when i look at his career i think we started seeing him more routinely in top tens and quite regularly in the top 50s obviously and Generally, that's the climb, and sooner or later, the lake and you come together, and this is an amazing moment. So I really looked at his equipment yesterday when I was in the boat with him, and, and like we have talked about, him being able to put a very high percentage of his fish in the boat. You know, we, we know he's been fishing a, a creature bait, a Zoom Z-Hog, and he's been fishing a one-ounce jig. Um, the creature bait, uh, he's using a three-quarter ounce VMC tungsten weight, and he's also using. Now this was this was a little different than a lot of people. It, it definitely caught my eye. And he knew it. He he even mentioned it. Um, he uses a four all wide gap VMC hook. Most anglers use a straight shank, a, a heavier hook, and he's mm -hmm. using a, a four all straight shank VMC flipping hook when he's got 50 pound braid on fishing this thick matted vegetation. But a lot of his fish came on that millfoil that was, you know, four or five feet deep, a lot of it, about a 100-foot stretch of millfoil. He's using, a, you know, a, a wide-gap hook and 20-pound test fluorocarbon. That's his two different setups for the different types of vegetation. And you've got to pay attention to everything when somebody puts so many fish in the boat and loses so few. But I still feel like there's there's something missing. You know what I mean? Like, even with that, you're like, okay, he's got a different hook set up. He's converting a higher percentage. Not like we're seeing these competitors lose a ton of fish this time around. Oh, yeah. He's hooked but up again, Dave. Caleb Kufal <laughs> continues <laughs> to punish. Well, he's, he's got, uh, you see, uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes that happens, too. I mean, he, even, even King Kong has a bad yeah. day. <laughs> Even King Kong stubs his toe, and uh, Caleb Kufal with the cheat codes has been King Kong. But from King Kong to Godzilla, what do you think he's thinking right now? Uh, I bet he can't believe what's happening. I bet he can't believe what's happening. Well, that would make a bunch of us that can't believe what is happening right here. Lake Connersville, unbelievable. The Berkeley Passmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville is sponsored by Hummingbird, Mercury, and by Nitro Boats. Welcome back to Lake Guntersville, the scene of our seventh stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series in a great aerial shot. 
of the minefield of cover that these fish live in. But the guy who has figured out how to mine that field literally is Caleb Kufal. Davey, I, I am going to continue to uh, cross-thread my brain trying to figure out what is going on here. I mean, is he simply just out fishing the entire field? Yeah, and looking at that leaderboard, uh, I think my math is good, a 17-pound lead. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, he's out fishing the field in two areas, two areas that every angler in this event uh, are familiar with. I mean, this is a stretch of the, of the lake that is famous for being good and in the other area the protected area he was in uh heck we just a couple years ago saw an angler on Bassmaster Live catch him over and over again and they almost had a great chance to win so he's just, you know hats off to him and we'll keep talking about his you know his setup his line his hooks his sinkers his, like the rest of the uh, one ounce it's jig he switched to using some he's uh he's just got it all going on no way is there getting more bites from bigger fish and putting them in the boat I did catch one though. It can be done. That device is a measuring stick. God, it feels good. Fish had to be 15 braid. inches, and anglers without the cheat code have to use those. Best paper sand in the world. Yeah. yeah, we haven't seen Caleb use a measuring board very much this week have we you don't need no stinking measuring boards boy a beautiful day out there davy like that's that's the postcard it's it's absolutely is it's it's gorgeous on lake gunners field see the See good water quality wherever you are throughout the country. To see good, clean water is, is awesome. And if you're a fisherman, you certainly love to see vegetation in the water because it provides uh, habitat right for all fish. Flip and never get the same hole twice. The shocking thing when you first come to Gunnersville, if you're from out of town, I mean, you don't imagine it to be as beautiful as it is around the lake. You know what I mean? All the hills and everything. Around. It really is a beautiful part of the country. But when you focus on on the lake, I mean, you just think it's a lake surrounded by lily pads and, and riprap. Yeah, <laughs> it, it does seem that way. But there's, you know, we've both been on it for those that have it. There is more to it than that. But it's just the fishermen are always focusing, not always, but more times than not focusing either on those lily pads or some type of vegetation or those bridges that have the riprap. It's just where... So many of the fish are caught here on this lake. So watching Caleb here, uh, and I've watched him closely, and I, I, we just talked about the exact line, 50-pound test braid when he's doing this, 20-pound uh, test fluorocarbon, the hooks, uh, four-alt straight shank VMC flipping hook when he's in this thicker vegetation, four-alt offset wide gap when he's in that millfoil. But here's something that... Very similar, but a little different. Hold on just a Palmer second. Luke Palmer's hooked up. Gosh, dang it. I don't think there's a fish in there anymore. Gosh. Or is there? Think so. I don't think so. Darn it. I'm not fluent in, gosh darn it, but I think that means no, it's definitely not there. All right. So back to Caleb flipping. It's it's easy to see someone fishing a jerk bait and oh, he's hooked up again. <laughs> Once again. Boy, that's some thick stuff he's got this fish in. That's a Bass didn't look like a real can't big one. Get him out of that stuff. God, you never can tell, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we watching? Your tournament leader on Championship Sunday. 
stuff is so gnarly in here. <laughs> That's so thick. Didn't make a big splash. I'd say maybe, maybe two and a half pounder. Yeah, there's, yeah there's, and we've talked about his it. landing percentage is so good, but that that was such a thick canopy. You you're just you're not going to hardly ever land a fish in that. Well, you just can't even get them out of it so often. What you're, is the right thing to do? Not saying that he didn't do the right thing, but but if I've got my my pad out and I want to figure out how to fish Matt like that, give me a lesson quick, Davey. Well, you you want to fish around the edges of that vegetation that's that thick because you know your chance of landing that fish is is not going to be as good if you flip right in the middle because see there was a lot of dead vegetation in there um, so hopefully the fish will be aggressive enough to come to the edge but then a couple pitches around the edge and then you say oh heck you know right in the middle and that where that fish happened to be sitting but his rhythm he pitches his bait in there whether it's a millful or this deeper grass he, he's bringing that bait a little farther up and down in this matted vegetation, but it's two or three hops with the rod tip, and he makes another presentation. He doesn't keep it in there long. It's, it's like a lot of these bites, most of these bites are happening on the fall, and he hops the bait two or three times, whether he's flipping mill full and six feet deep or this matted vegetation and three feet deep, two or three hops, back out, makes another presentation. Does that tell you that the fish are sitting higher to the to closer to the mat, basically? Than yeah, the with him, bottom? him bringing the bait a little higher up in the water column. But it also he's he he seems to be fishing slow, but he's he's not. Um, he's just making a lot of presentations, you know, three feet apart. He doesn't leave that bait in there very long. You see some anglers that once they pitch in a mat, they'll leave it in there, you know, five or six swings with the rod. Let's say you see here, it's going to be one two three and he's out of there maybe four he's he just not gonna leave that bait but he does make a couple you know hops one two three he's out of there and, and watch it his doesn't head. matter i mean whether he's in the mill fall or in this thick watch him he's, he's got that same rhythm and you have to pay attention to everything he's doing when he's got a 17 pound lead and you can tell he's getting most of his eats you know that first or second pop because yes. his head turns when he goes to go to make the third yeah. pop his head turns and he yeah. starts thinking about where like I'm going he next has any confidence he's going to get that but he's just looking for the next target now let's go over to park hill oklahoma's jason christie who has already got one elite series title this year 16 tour level wins And he's using a spinning rod on Lake Gunner's belt. <laughs> totally makes sense. Device I spoke of, not used by those with cheat codes. Over to one of them, or the one with the cheat codes. Caleb Kufal. I'm going to tell you, as soon as I play Bassmaster Fishing 2022, I, that's who I'm being. Every time I come to Gunnersville, I'm I'm being Caleb Kufal. Absolutely. No offense, Davey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the way he is... Uh... Trying to lap the field. No offense taken. Just watch him here. Just watch when the bait hits the water. Down. One. Two. 
Fuck. Three. <laughs> see his head? Yep. And see, he pitches a foot away from where he just was. One, two, three. Three or four feet over to the left. Two. Three. And you can tell this is a zone where he obviously feels like there's a likelihood of a fish because this is the slowest we've seen him in a while. Yeah, and, but this is also why he didn't catch these fish on day one and day two because you see he wants to ease up to this mat and make a lot of pitches to this one you know, mat that's probably a 30-foot circle. And he's, you know, he's on his, what, eighth or tenth pitch into this one mat. A lot of presentations doesn't leave it in the same place very long. And you can see uh, there's not a lot of tournament anglers around him, but he's not in this secret place. We, we, you know, you look to the left, you look to the right, you see a couple boats here, a couple boats there. That's what's so incredible. About it. We've seen... You know, I think about the Patrick Walters win at Fork last fall, but he was doing something that no one else that we saw on Bass Live was doing. So you're like, wow, he's got a bait, he's got electronics, he's got everything going, and, and nobody's doing that. But, heck, 80% of the top 10 are doing the same thing that Caleb's doing. Another guy not afraid to throw a spinning rod and another Elite Series champion, of course, inside our top 10. On this, the Mayest of the Two Forests, Victoria Day weekend in Canada, Chris Johnston. Yeah, just roaming. Little one. Not a keeper. More Chris just had a much fish. slower start this morning than he's been having the previous three days. Ugh. It's kind of like our anglers know what's happening. I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> Chris, that's not normal for him. You can tell it's just like, man, these need to be seven pounders, not two pounders. He's wore down. I mean, it's it, it's it's made two four. He wants to be at Wasega Beach with a two four, but the guy who could be wherever he wants is our tournament leader, Caleb Kufal. 82 pounds, five ounces, and what he is doing is unheard of, unfathomable, unbelievable, but it is happening. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Hope you're having a great Sunday. We are spending our Sunday in championship wise. Bassmaster lead at Lake Gunnersville. We have got a giant lead by Kayla Kufal and Mark Zona nine times out of, well, more often than not, we, it's a knockdown drag out. With 15 minutes left to fish, often we don't know who's won these tournaments. Uh, other times, yeah, there, there, there's a good margin of victory. Almost never is it this large a, a margin, a lead, like the one held by Kayla Kufal right now. No, really, the, the two tournaments that stick out that we kind of knew, obviously the Patrick Walters beatdown, I heard Davey and Dave Mercer talking about it on Lake Fork, and we also knew that Lee Livesey, he was going to win that event this year, sure. but every other event that we have had, talked about it a little bit on our Fox broadcast, this time of year, post-spawn, when the vast majority of the field is fishing shallow, sort of doing the same thing, those are tight events. And this dude has almost a 20 pound lead at this point. Let's sell Dane hooked up. Another big spot. There's a lot of spots hanging out on that ledge. God, he ate it like a five pound oh, That's bass. big spots. Large mouth. I 
That's big spots. I smoked it. I, I gotta weigh it. I gotta weigh this joker. Little joker head. Look at the mouth on that spot. Big wow. spot. 250, that's a two and a half pound spot. That's bigger than those other ones, for oh. sure. Heard Scott Martin earlier in the week saying he's on some really big spots offshore. Palmer. Boy, Scott Martin salvaged his week. Did I find every 14? No, oh, did he ever? In case you don't measure it. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, I caught another keeper. It happened. He's a 15 and an eighth. But you know what, we get the call. It's, it's a miracle. I didn't know if it was possible for that to happen to me. We at least get to see exactly what we got now. A couple thousand dollar call right there. Z moving from eighth to second for Lee, Luke Palmer if he can stay right there in second place today. And you know, something really strange that one of our anglers said after the weigh in yesterday, Greg Hackney, talking about the clarity of this water. You could obviously look behind Luke Palmer, see how clear Lake Gunnersville is. Hackney made the prediction. He said, I'm going to tell you, okay, if so this red, lake stays this clear, pounds. it will be a phenomenal smallmouth fishery in that years to like come. Six ounces. Mm. That's what they're eating. You always see someone in practice post a selfie with a smallmouth that they caught, but you never see someone in a tournament be able to turn that into something. So you're saying in a couple years, that could that could be more of a deal. That's exactly the exact words from Hackney were, if, it, if this lake stays this clean, this clear, you will see a smallmouth population explode in here. Back to Caleb Kufal with unofficially, get ready, 17 and a quarter pound lead. Which would be the second biggest winning margin in Bassmaster Elite Series history, second to only last fall at Pat Patrick Walters, which will never be broken, right? <laughs> Says you. Never say never, but <laughs> my gosh, doesn't seem likely. Yeah, Ronnie, from ninth to second place is a difference from 16,000 to 35,000. Makes getting your face kicked in a little bit better, you know. Battle for a second. Scott Martin, Z. Mm hmm He had fallen. He, he started the week 25th in AOI, and after that day one, he had fallen outside the classic cut by several spots. And today he is in, uh, where did he jump up to with his 12th place finish? He's 18th. So he's he's pretty well established. Yeah, and into not the only classic. that, hey, let's throw in, let's throw in a Chris Zaldane who was in big eighty <laughs> third, I think. Oh, no. Ooh, what is that? That's one of them. Uh -huh. It's a Sunday grebe standing on one foot. Well, oh, I don't know. Turtle's fixing it. Ian's got a little buddy, a little turtle. Snatch his yeah, leg off. It's National yeah. Turtle Day, Z. We can say hey to the turtle. It's National <laughs> Grebe Day. Not sure. There he is. <laughs> Turtle's fixing <laughs> snap. So, anyway, back to what I was talking about. <laughs> yeah. You know, this tournament, listen, this tournament has done it to the anglers and the staff, the production staff. I heard Height and Mercer talk about that. It, you almost feel like at this time of the day, the anglers kind of know. You know what I mean? They got that calculator going on in their head, what they need. 
and you you're like watching Chris Johnston's like he knew the beating that's going to be administered later on. I don't have 33 pounds, so I'm shooting for second now. But just like Scott Martin, Chris Zaldane, really with a slow day one, needing to climb back in those Angler of the Year standings, moved all the way up to 51st. Yeah, yeah he started 66. But I mean, he was in. Z, 66. Right. In danger. He's got about uh, 40 points to make up to get <sighs> in the classic cut in the next two events. Right. He's making points today. Well, and the tough thing is Chris Johnston, who started third, dropping down to 10th. You lose seven points right there, and he would go from 55 back to 62 back. And even though it's you can only drop to 10th today, he does he wants to keep as many points in his favor going up north as possible to make that comeback easier against Seth Fighter. You notice Fighter is feeling it. He starts uh, getting fish catches. He's he's really getting pumped up and excited. <laughs> Really think that's gonna help. It's you gonna be to the same hand? deal. Me hitting him on the head. Slow day for Canada's Chris Johnston. Having a great season as Johnston. All but two of our top ten are having good, solid seasons with yes. the Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. Uh, yeah, Chris Aldane, who's looking a lot better now with two events yet to go. He'll be in points gathering mode uh, when we make it to New York State for sure. But uh, he can see a way. He can see a pathway. Tough year for Shane Lineberger. Yeah, Zaldane's about yeah. 39 points, 39 points for 11 spots. And that's what was weird, Z, is there were guys who finished tw in the 20s and 30s this week, yeah. made the day three cut, beat 70 or 80 anglers in the They're field, and lost points towards the Classic because it was a kind of a weird flip-flop. Guys who were outside the Classic caught right. them this week, guys inside fell back to them, and it kind of bunched up a lot of guys. And if you didn't get in that top 20 or make today, you lost points. Right. Hackney in sixth place for points. Palmer in 24th. That's that's a good place to be. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing we have not done all day long today, Tommy Sanders. Well, uh, oh. Yeah. May, yeah. 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 Striker Daily Trivia. Got it. Copy that. Let's take, uh, take a quick peek at our next installment of it. Here it comes. What was Hank Cherry's lead after day one of the 2020 Classic? Big leads is kind of a theme today. Was it a seven pound, one ounce lead? Seven six, seven eleven, or seven fifteen? Hank Cherry, 14 months ago, at the Academy Sports and Doors Sports and Outdoors Classic. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Caleb Kufal, all the time. That's what the story is today. We are going to continue that storyline for you as we get closer and closer to weigh in time. We hit you with some striker daily trivia right before we went to break right there. Again, repeating the question What was Hank Cherry's lead after day one of the 2020 Classic? You remember he had 29 pounds plus on that day, a huge, almost shutdown kind of weight that he was able to nurse over the finish line. Mark Zona, what was the, uh, how big a lead up. was it? Eyes up, Z. Don't look I down. I want to add an E option of not as big as Caleb Kufal's. I'm going to go with 7 pounds, 15 ounces, total gas ballpark. Okay. We'll go 7-11. I'll go opposite end of the spectrum. 7-1. Okay. 
Okay. Tommy Sanders wins them. All right, there we go. 7-Eleven. Every answer Such does is B or C. It's like it is he's, not. Just, he's like he's an exam no, and an essay. I think that's right. I think I mean, that's right. Cruz and Clint Davis were tied for second at 21-8. How about that? Even when it's B, it's actually C, or when it's C, it's actually B based on oh, yeah, yesterday. Okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we explained the reason we thought it was right. We were wrong in the reasoning, but we selected the correct number. Grieb. Yeah. Correct letter. No. no. It's a slippery slope. Slipping around on Championship Sunday on a little snow. <laughs> Doing a little boat stock in there, obviously. I love that video, Z. He is. He's coming right up on the transom, isn't he? He's tiptoeing through the hyacinth. <laughs> I'll eat a salad, but about one every week or two. <laughs> Those are pretty good. So they're like twelve dollars. Yeah, yeah. That's what happens when I eat a salad. It's got that feeling this time of day that the pressure yeah. up shallow for the guys that have been fishing the <laughs> bluegill beds. That's what I've been doing. I've been it's getting food all the way that back. And if I don't fall up. asleep quick, I'm hungry again. Been a while for those guys uh, since they've caught their, their last keeper. So, No, and really this time of day throughout this entire tournament, anybody that's joined us on Bassmaster.com watching this, this is really when a lot of the big, big fish, giant calls have been made throughout this week. you're just checking in with us. If you uh, didn't see much of the morning's action, you knew that uh, Caleb Kufal started with a pretty big lead, 11 and a half pounds. He's extended that to about 17 pounds and four ounces now. So we are kind of just counting the, uh, the hours until weigh-in time, which comes at 3 p.m. Eastern time right here on Bassmaster.com. Yeah, it was, it was kind of cool to listen to a lot of his sound after the weigh-in yesterday where he kind of, he said, man, you learn real quick on the Bassmaster Elite Series. He said, Look, I'm a shallow water fisherman. I'm not very good at fishing offshore with electronics and stuff like that. And he said, you really learn in a hurry where your holes are at coming to the Elite Series. He said, these guys, they will teach you quickly where your weakest point is. He started out pretty good, a 16th at the St. John's River, and then he uh, got a top 12 at the Sabine, the tough Sabine fishery there. There we go. <laughs> he might not help, but that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, many, so many great shots of these these fish. They're all week long. We get to taking it for granted, but man, we're just seeing the the best of the best of fishing photography. Yeah, we could really start to give the juice out in case you're taking a trip to Lake Gunnersville. The real beating has been North Saudi Goose Pond Landing area, all the way up to the BB Comer and West Logan. We said this yesterday. He said, man, I don't know a lot about Lake Gunnersville, but what I do know, the only area I need to fish is from Goose Pond to that bridge. Chris Johnston hooked up. Come really, on, you look boy. at your takeoff to the left side of your screen and you see Chris Johnston. And then as you kind of get up the lake, just a couple miles, but here's the thing. If you really looked at the checks that were cashed in this tournament, they were from North Saudi to that takeoff area at Goose Pond to BB Comer. Yeah, I'm going to say that there was probably 30 to 40 checks cashed just in that stretch you're looking at right there. Exactly 
where Jamie Hartman won in 2019. And it was eerie. I was thinking about that. We've been here a lot of times, Z, but the last five, six now, including this week. What's the size? It has slowly moved What's up the lake from the south end as we get yeah. farther along right. in the year. And this May and June region has been now dominated two times in a row this these months in this neck no? of the woods. Is that better grass or a good mixture of depth with the river channels and the flats or, or what's the deal? Hey, it's just an area of hat for the of the history of Lake Gunnersville. It's just a very, very, very consistent stretch. You know, a lot of a lot of people, Alex Davis, who we brought up a lot, lot guides here. They'll tell you there may be bigger fish down at the bottom. A lot of people believe some of the biggest bass that live in this lake live in honeycomb. But as far as numbers of quality, it always produces in that three to four mile stretch. A lot of grass. You have the main river channel, plus you have a secondary channel on the east side of the lake that provide some depth so those fish can slide if they need to. It is very impressive how much this grass at Gunnersville filters the water. They People were saying they hadn't gotten a lot of rain this week, but just 10 days ago before the event started, we had to postpone a day of fishing just 45 minutes away because of how much rain came through there. So they definitely have had rain in April and May, but it's not enough to dirty up Gunnersville at all because of the filtration of that grass. Mm -hmm. Like this spot. They're tiny, but. Tyler Rivette currently in ninth place. And Looking for kind of subplots to the Caleb Kufal story here. Part of the problem is avoiding being one of the top tenors who gets beaten by 20 pounds mm. on this day. That's a nice one. Yeah. I don't know who his cameraman was, but that was phenomenal. That was right on it. <laughs> That was a cool one too. I told you something was about to happen. Good stuff right here, Tommy. There he comes. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Tyler Rivette living with a frog, doing a little bit of punching. Said he had a new punching bait that he did not want to show us. Hmm. Prototype. Creature bait, as he called it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about, man? He's up watching Hack the Tie on live mix, and he actually <laughs> moved the camera away from showing when he put his plastic on the hook. Good job, Todd. Thank you. No problem. We've seen that play out Z a lot where guys were like, I don't want to tell you about my shaky head because everyone else who's throwing a shaky head what? will know I'm throwing a shaky head. It's not much yes. of a secret. Yeah, just We've so you told can't this come story. <laughs> We've told this story before. Tommy Sanders, myself, was one of the very, very, very first, I think it was the first yeah, Elite Series been. tournament yeah. down at Lake Amistad. And I would go around and collect baits from, from the leaders. And I walked up to an angler from the, he's from the state of Texas. And I said, could I, could I get your, oh no, 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 no. I said, wow, 
it's a secret. Yeah, yeah. And I just don't want to, I don't want to give my secrets out to the rest of the field. So I'm going to pass. I said, okay. I said, can I ask what the bait is? Ronnie, it was a five inch Cinco. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last day of the tournament he did. They said, I have to fish right. here again. I have to fish here again, guys. Yeah. You know? Oh, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go to Amistad and throw that then since they've obviously never heard or seen that bait before, right? Yeah. <laughs> The rookies in our top 10 here, but we will take a oh. look at our Seaguar Rookie Watch and take a look at where a couple of our prominent rookies fish. Z. And I'm going to say it right now, Tommy Sanders. Brian New, it's our guy. Oh, that man. guy has been no doubt. clawing, scratching from behind all week long. As we said, so many of our leaders, a lot of our rookies doing damage within just a couple miles of our takeoff. Your Seaguar. Bassmaster rookie watch kind of been bouncing around a lot the last couple tournaments. But Brian knew, as he said, Texas not too kind to him rebounding here at Gunnersville. Mm -hmm. Cigar Bassmaster rookie watch. I did say that, Brian knew. Be interesting to see how all of our rookies do when the Elite Series resumes after the Classic up in New York State. Looking forward to that. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Ten strong anglers out there on the water today, strong enough to make it through all the cuts and all the, all the uh, obstacles in their way and make it to this final championship Sunday, but one angler has just flat outfished everyone, not by a little, but by a long, long way, and that's Caleb Kupal of Wisconsin. 17 pounds and four ounces is a set. No, wait, no, it's been cut into just a little bit now. Maybe there's a story behind that. Let's go out to uh, a little in a minute after this. I hear the music. Yeah, let's do that, Tommy Sanders. And not to quote one of my friends from Wisconsin, it has been a meet down, beat down, smack down, crack down, Caleb Kufal. But your power pole replay of the day, a one Luke Palmer lost a lot of critical bass yesterday, day number three. Semi-final Saturday, connecting with them early today. This one right here yes, would shave yeah. that lead down to 17 and a quarter pounds. <laughs> hey, Luke, you are the powerful <laughs> replay of the day, my friend. Well done. Know, work. In fact, uh, working on a really nice stringer for Luke Palmer today at a great, great event for the Oklahoma Angler. Powerful good. replay of the day. Yeah. Luke's been good on Gunnersville the last two visits. He made here. Wes Logan, haven't heard from him in a while. He was uh, knocked out of second place it was a good while back by Luke Palmer. And we see now that he has regained that status. Is limit fish, I believe. Currently sitting. We got five. Four. So, yep, there's number five. Well, there's a lot of anglers throughout practice that were idling offshore, looking for those schools that, like Chris Zaldane, has capitalized on. I guarantee you, a lot of those anglers are watching this footage, going, "How did I not?" Check the mats by BB Comer Bridge. Mm. Wes Logan, Caleb Kufall. Z, yeah. you mentioned it. You mentioned my fantasy team and how mm -hmm. poor it's doing. The only thing that could uh, help me is if I nail the winning weight of 8410. So I need Kufall to call at least one more time. You know, pretty good for me. Okay. Got to hit it well, exactly. You might running. get it. I do to get yeah to get that. Say exactly. odds are in your favor. Yeah. Yes. Boom. Get you off the carpeting, buddy. 
Okay, that one right there might have sealed this whole thing up. You just gotta put the card before the horse. There's here. still a lot of time left. I chance. know. So many folks watching from Wisconsin. That's awesome. Oh, this has been a this has been a thrashing. Mm. Continues to be. Ask and you shall receive, Ronnie. How about that? Hey, I'm good with that. Yeah. I believe it'll get rid of one of his two and a half pounders. He's got three of those and two four pounders. So even on his worst day, still the best bag of the day, basically. You know, the other thing about that area, Ron, and I was listening to Davey Height talk about it, he's kind of fishing the edges and uh, stuff like that. Three in two months. Quarter pound upgrade, I would say, somewhere in that area. Really, in two, you know, just a month from now, that that's a huge, huge mat. From there all the way back down to Goose Pond, where it kind of scatters them out. It's a little bit more needle in a haystack. With the lack of all, you know, that four mile mat, it's obviously condensed a lot of those fish in this general area because the grass just isn't up as good as it will be later in the summer. Do you think it's changed much since they first started practicing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? I think it has for guys like Zaldane. I mean, Zaldane did a total 180. And if you really look at Scott Martin, he did a 180. He did, had a horrible day one. Zaldane had a horrible day one. And then their offshore bags instantly grew. Um, I, I No, I don't. I don't think the shallow game has changed. I just think a lot of the anglers that are shallow have run out of them. You know, I think if anything, the deep water game has changed and got better if you talk to a lot of the guys that were trying to make that work. Get back out to West Logan. Him real early this morning, and he was—he kind of had a feeling. He said, "Boy, might be a real slow day for me today." Yeah, and Wes, like so many others in our top hey. ten, they knew that there would have to be a catastrophic disaster for Kufal to not put this one away. Hey, even if Wes finishes second here and doesn't close the gap more than 16 pounds or whatever he needs to, to get close to Kufal, this is a great two tournament stretch for him. Oh, Young Elite two, Series two. Pro has not closed the deal on the final day in some events when he's led. And so for him to get that done last week, come into this event and be able to carry momentum over, it's good, and he's sitting top ten in Angler of the Year as well. So yeah. he is really coming into his own this season. Yeah, earn one hundred thirty-five thousand in the month of May. Yeah, yeah, I take good, that. Good month. Uh -huh. I mean, just as soon as it broke through. Oh, I, the last time I pulled in, I felt when he came out, I pinned him. He what, must not have been. That big, but I pulled. I was like, "Well, I'm gonna pull him out." And I felt him when he come off. Hmm. Dang. So I'm 100% sure that first time was a bite. It was almost a good decision. Might as well just go round and round this mat for the rest of the day.
please do. Ow. That will not help. Caleb Kufal continues to catch him as if he needed him. What a performance this week on Guardsville. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Right at about two hours fishing time for our 10 anglers out here on Championship Sunday. Seventh stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Wrapping up the swing through Alabama in less than three weeks time. We will take a break and contest the most important tournament in all of fishing. Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic presented oh. by Hook. That is on the way and then the Elite Series picks up in the month of July in the great bass fishing state of New York. And then we are done. I got yeah, it. That's it. I don't know how big she is. Z, you got an early handicap for the Classic? A couple guys might do well there. I got to be honest with you, man. And I, I, Such, I think I talked to you about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, I thought it was like I a had a dream that Seth Fighter won this classic. Really? I did. I'm not kidding. Hmm. What else was in that dream, Z? You sure wasn't AOI? You think it was classic? I don't know. I don't yeah, know what it was. Right, <laughs> it was a cat sitting there that had died that day. What? What? That's Fighter's dream. You know that? He said he seen a cat ghost. His cat died, and then that night, Luke West Logan he was has sitting in its spot. Ronnie, I, I know you usually do your homework on this stuff. What does it take to win events this time of year on Ray Roberts? Wait, were you talking to me about doing homework? <laughs> yes, Luke on the Palmer classic lot. Right. Yes, Luke Palmer lot. at Ray Roberts right there and if you really kind of go off of and I'm just solely going off of the Lake Fork event that we had a few weeks ago man with everything behind you could be timing this one for those fish to just at least the mass population to just getting offshore even though we saw Matt Heron do very well there fishing shallow one thing will be said and we've heard this from a lot of anglers there will be some big stringers the biggest problems might be consistency this time around the Bassmaster Classic. I would agree with that, Z. And looking at some of the past events, like you mentioned, the research, sorry, I didn't have my IFB all the way in when you mentioned that. Bass Champs 2019, the same week as the Classic, basically taking about 29 pounds for a Bass Champs team tournament to win oh. big bass around seven and three quarters. A couple, or and an eight and a half pounder was caught, an eight pounder was caught. So, the chance of catching big ones and a big bag is definitely going to be there. I believe in that Bass Champs, it took uh, at least the top 13 had all over 20 pounds. Wow. That's, that's pretty strong.
Fish. Ow. Actual simultaneously the two smallest bass we've seen today. Did you just break? Yes, you did. I literally made one cast with that. I believe there were actually two opens and former elite pros fishing in that Bass Champs then. Drew Sloan fishes the opens consistently, and then Brian Clark, I believe, also was in there. Fishing Remember Brian event. Clark? Yeah. Absolutely. When was this tournament? That was in 2019, same year. They're week. everywhere. They're just real small. I actually got to cover Brian Clark one time, Z, and that was in the wild card event in 2015 over by Kentucky Lake. Let me keep on catching them. Yep. When we had the opens, the top opens, anglers fishing that too. Yeah, here in one. Tommy, correct me if I, what, was he not a rodeo star? Brian Clark? Yeah. I'm not sure. I vaguely remember that. I'm gonna have to I look remember him, I, I, I just don't remember that connection. Yes. Now we had Cody, who won a few years ago, was a noted Brian? team roper guy. Oh, I, I really remember that? Brian Clark telling us that he got stepped on by like a bull swine or something. <laughs> a bull swine. A bull swine. A minotaur. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's talk about Cody. Uh, who won the Open? Oh, Cody Bird. Cody Bird. Cody Bird. Yeah. Cody Bird. Yeah. yeah, he'll be in the Classic. Yeah, yeah, he'll be there. See him. Yeah, you're right, Z. He was an ex-bull rider, jumped back in the Elite Series. Shoot, I see that story right here. Yes. I think we've had another one. Jay Brainerd was like a rodeo. Clown. Well, I didn't say that. I was he would, he would do acrobatics and jump over a charging bull. It was amazing. <laughs> hmm. Wow. I thought you were just being real mean, Such. I was, no. I, mean, I was going to say no, rodeo guy. No, he was guy, one of the guys you... who kept... <laughs> The bull riders from being tore up when they <laughs> now did he fell off their the bull. Now did he wear the? No, makeup? he was not that okay. type of okay. rodeo clown. He was one of the the hands, top hands. That water clarity, it just absolutely shocking there. That shot, Brandon Cobb. Now it. It may have been a while ago, Z, but I just got sent 2013 results from Ray Roberts from June from Mr. Lee Livesey, who Ooh. won that event with 20 pounds. Three fish limit, though. Wow. Three fish limit. For oh, the, three fish limit. Yeah, somebody caught a 10-pounder wow. that week at nine and three quarters. Nine. Well, in the wow. 2016 TTBCs, Al Dane won a truck with a 712. The winning weight was around 51 with Heron. So it was final day was 17 pounds, but that was... Several weeks earlier, late May. Not sure we've ever had it. I don't think we have had an elite series event on a Trinity River system, a strictly speaking elite series event on a Trinity River system lake. Now, we had a major uh, on a couple of lakes in that area, Eagle Mountain and Benbrook, hey, we, 15 years ago, pre, I think, pre elite. We didn't have an event on the Trinity River this season, but we had we've an angler had go to the Trinity right. River. Lee Livesey. Livesey. Yeah. Yeah. While fishing the Sabine event. Get Livesey to coach us up before that event, no doubt about it. Be interesting to watch Cody Bird in that tournament. Cody's been a long time hand in the state of Texas. I'll be honest with you. I'm I'm sure he's watching. Uh, Tommy, I think we throw an invite for Livesey to, to join us on the set and really dial us in that That'd be day. cool. Yeah. We welcome that. Begin.
This would be huge for Christy. He only has 10 pounds. Smallest is a pound and a quarter, pound and three quarters. What is a good one? Easy. Finally. With the way the bash track has been, everyone's so, so tight from 5th to 10th. That'll get him two pounds at least, and that'll put him from ninth all it's the way up there in the top five, probably. I mean, that's one of the bigger ones we've seen Christy catch this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Caught one first thing yesterday. Was in there where good. she was this morning. And uh, like my, I just, like I was insane. Like it just kept coming and coming and coming. This is Christy, number two, Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. Yeah, today is just about not losing points, Tommy. He can gain yeah. some points, but he started the day in fourth, dropping down to ninth. You just don't want to lose it, so he'll move right back up to where he started the day, basically. Don't want to give up any ground. He's got plenty, plenty of ground to make. To make up on the leader Seth Fighter as it is right now with two events left. The Bassmaster Elite season with Caleb Kufal has got the lead that will not even be touched, will not be approached through the rest of the fishing today. We got less than two hours to go of fishing here at Lake Gunnersville. The Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Gunnersville is sponsored by Minkota. Powerful and by Skeeter Boats. Fourth quarter, championship Sunday on Lake Gunnersville. Caleb Kufal more than in control, absolutely. Having conquered Lake Gunnersville this time. Now, I oh, was told we have a question and answer edition of Striker Daily ah. Trivia here. So, okay, which elite? Which of these elites fished the most days in last fall's three consecutive events that started at Lake Gunnersville? Which elite fished the most days out of those three events? So made the most cuts, 12 possible days, 12 possible days. Remember, it was over a 20-day span. They you, could have competed 12 days I, over 20 you days. You better get it, Z, because I got I, it. I, I, I'm fairly positive that it was Austin Felix, because it seems like we had him on Bassmaster Live every single day. I was going with Stetson Blaylock because I know he made two of the final days, I believe, but I, I feel really yeah, unconfident where I was headed. I don't oh, know. I, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking Blaylock, too. We saw so much of him. And the reveal. Pick again. Oh, my Pick God. Again. Wow. Kyle Welch. Wow. Kyle Welch. Welch. Up the fifth river, at, man. Yeah, we did, man. 2020. Well, see, we event. had him at. A lot it was fifth at Gunnersville, yeah. 32nd at Santee, and 10th at Chip. But didn't. Puff, Tally, Tally, Blaylock, Felix, Gustafson, and Mullins all fished 10 days. He had 11. Hey, it's real quick, Sooch, Sooch, I'm going to call for it real quick. I had been talking about a bull swine. I've been kicked by one also. Talking about Brian Clark, Cody Bird, yeah. guys that are actually not in this event that both have been Whoa. booted by a bull oh my swine. God. Well, no. Exactly. No, no. It's a oh mix God. between a Texas Longhorn and a swine. Kind of a doctor, island of Dr. Moreau <laughs> vibe. The big no. Kathy yeah. and I have talked about those things. Is that it's Babe grown up? That is Babe. That's, that's what Babe, babe from back in. Oh. That's what it is now. Unbelievable. Wow. Huh. Hey, Z, I wanted to let you know that uh, Wes Logan, when he made that cold just about 20 minutes ago, he finally surpassed Caleb Kufal's day three weight of 66.13. That is another way to describe how dominant he has been that Three quarters of the way through day four, they finally passed his day three leading weight. Mm, wow. <laughs> Christie's right there. He had a, that four and a half, our big fish of the day, except a third place. So he's gaining one point on Seth Fighter from yesterday. So he's only 47 back if he stays there. You know, looking, really looking at that angler of the year list. 
It's that fighter in command, but boy, those are some spooky <gasps> grebes. What? Now what, them. huh? Very. Aha. Uh -huh. I can't see. It's a Blanco. And he's grebe. one of them. He's sixth. Hackney is sixth. Oh, he's right. All over it. Yes. Oh, I thought you were saying one. Hackney was a grebe. The yeah. there. And I've had, I don't know, about four bites here, you know, in the last few minutes. Last 15 or so. Time goes pretty fast doing this because you just can't get in a hurry. I had just picked up an ounce and a half because I couldn't get that ounce and a quarter. I've been from an ounce to an ounce and a quarter. Now I'm at an ounce and a half. It's a little different in here, you know. It's, stuff's a little thicker. It's like it's a little farther along than the other places I've been. Uh, I've been fishing. I haven't. Like this is the first time I've been in here this week. It's such a big area, it's kind of vast, and I only spent one day of practice on this end of the lake, so I didn't have time to look at everything. So today we just kind of looking at everything I didn't look at. I was just fixing to leave, and I just noticed a vegetation change. And that's been a big key for me this week is that stuff, you know, to the casual eye, it all looks the same, but it is not. It's about three different types of vegetation growing, and I ain't counting the moss that's growing underneath it, but I mean. Well, that was, that was really good information listening to Hackney. He is so incredible at reading grass. Talking about where you get those vegetation mixes. Tommy, we were talking about Caleb Kufal. He's been at this for 18 years. Not right. professionally, this is only his second year, but 18 years leading up to this point of doing so well in the Opens, qualifying for the Elites, making a Bassmaster Classic. And really the struggle sometimes for rookies is breaking in and getting your traction with sponsors or equipment and whatnot. And with the way qualification went at the end of 2019, how quickly we started 2020, Kufal just went with what brought him there you know, running an older boat, running older technology, still thriving on the Elite Series, but I guarantee you after this win that he will no longer be running. Be some upgrades. His, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. 100% sure. But it, it takes you a little while to happens. get your footing sometimes. We saw that with Seth Fighter running that, just what what he could do to get to the Elites with. Kind of got to me a while ago. I and after taking... two years, he's able to, to jump into a bigger, better deal. You know, and Ronnie, I'm not scared to pull the curtain back with Greg Hackney real quick. Uh huh. I tried to let him load up on it that time. We have covered him really his entire career, he right, Tommy it, Sanders? Yeah. Probably wasn't very big. He got it. He was. As as it, uh... He was rough on my guy, Tommy, at the beginning. He would. He, he would. What? I think he called you the the hall monitor for a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I, th I think for some reason he didn't. Didn't think I, I was. It didn't know. click off the bat with yeah, you. Yeah, he, he didn't think I was the right guy to hang around. It's so much harder to stick the on that ounce and a half. Than they as far are. as I know, he still now. thinks. <laughs> no, that's transition you know, to Such and I, the you know, Such and the fantasy man. Hey, Such had to know, ruffle those me. feathers. You can't please everybody. Trust me, when hey, Hackney hey. left for a couple of years, he was happy to get back with you, Tommy. He was happy. <laughs> well, one of my favorite quotes. I don't know the secret to success, but the secret to failure is trying to please everybody. <laughs> Can't do it. Can Let's I attribute, the, can oh, I attribute that. that quote to you, Tommy? What? No. I, Gorgeous. You, you're going to you're, you're gonna do a double take when you hear who really made that original quote. <laughs> who do you think it was? I don't even know what era or genre or character it could be. Hackney hooked it. Nope, nope. That quote is attributed to Bill Cosby. What do you think about that? Well, he's wow. He him. Okay, there was yeah. one there. This is kind of different. First well, it was really, where I got like, you know, where there were a lot of really strange. Hackney was in command of that anchor 
the year race for a while, the top of the year. Then we went to Pickwick before all of that water came into Pickwick. It was one of Hackney's best practices of his career, he said. Yeah, he started with a second place in Florida, seventh place in Knoxville, completely different setup, top 15 and the Harris chain open. And then, uh, man, you were looking like a, a correct pundit early there, Z. I think you predicted him to be in the AOI hunt for the title. Yeah. And, you know, the lakes, obviously, with everything running late, you know, a lot of our tournaments have been very, very shallow water events. I think that the two really stunning finishes to him, to Greg, was Pickwick, where he has dominated. He's got a win there, a lot of top fives. And then going to the Sabine, I, I think somewhere in that Sabine tournament, he just outran a lot of areas that were getting pressure. And it seemed like you had to be in those areas that were getting pressure to catch him. Yeah, I, I was shocked to see him come in with only four on day two of Pickwick and miss the cut yes. by just ounces. And then missing the cut at the Sabine after losing what was a five plus pounder on day one, one of those bites that you have to land on a fishery like the Sabine. You have to land that fish. Whereas if you lose a five at Gunnersville, you have another shot on goal later. Right. Twenty seventeen, when Hackney went to uh, the New York tour, we're about to embark on. After this, he finished top ten at Champlain. Oh! Let's do it one more time, Tommy Sanders. This has been a display today, and as I've said it so many times, a fishing pole is like a magic wand. <laughs> and there are. There's one place in particular. It's a mythical place. It's a mystical place that we call here at JM Associates. We call it the woodshed. Well, the woodshed has administered many com comeuppance throughout the decades. Well, the one that we have seen this week, the host of the woodshed, Caleb Kufal, he has administered pain all week long on Gunnersville. Fair to say this is the easiest one of the entire year. Just like a snake, I'm slithering and like a cat, I'm stalking. Hey, Caleb Kufal, yeah, you are the power pole replay. Woo! Of yes. the season, my friend. First Wisconsin angler to win a Ooh. Bassmaster Elite Series victory trophy tournament. How do you think he's going to oh, react on stage? The day. Well done. I, I, you just kind of feel like he's going to keep it together. Yeah. And it's high and tight, man. Hey, and some of these blowouts have happened on some of the craziest and best lakes in the country. Fork, Grand, Smith Mountain, St. John's, Toho, Seminole, Champlain, Okeechobee, Fork, Bull Shoals, and now Gunnersville. Coming up when we return from our break, it'll be Davey Hyde and Dave Mercer. Carrying you through it closer and closer to weigh-in time, which is coming up at 3 Eastern time today right here on Bassmaster.com. Caleb Kufal, yeah, can he hold it together? for an hour and a half longer. We'll see when we come back. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Welcome back to our on location coverage for the seventh stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series. And it's not a stop, it's a stomp. Let's be awesome, let's be honest. It's a, the seventh stomp of the Bassmaster Elite Series because Caleb Kufal is absolutely doing what many thought would be impossible in this tournament, to, to go to one of the most public bodies of water, one of the most pressured bodies of water, and to fish in front of some of the best shallow water power anglers ever, and to literally cheat code them out of this victory. I mean, he has broken the video game this week here in Alabama. Unbelievable what he has continue to do and continues to do that the site of our takeoff here at goose pond colony i'm joined by the uber talented bassmaster class champion two-time angler of the year and all-around good guy davy height and davy what in the world is happening well it's it is so surprising but 
West Logan has cut into the lead. It's only 16 pounds now, so, which is unbelievable. I mean, to think that you come to Gunnersville with so much history. So many of these anglers have been here many, many times. Uh, and, and there are no secrets. The, the two areas that he is fishing, the baits that he is using, there's no secrets there. He has just outfished the entire field. No other way to put it. What he is doing this week is not seen. I mean, and, and let's be honest. I mean, if, if, if you change the name, and this is not an insult to Caleb Kupal. This is just the points in their career. But if you change the name and you say this guy's doing it, Greg Hackney is doing that, walking away with this, it all makes sense. But man, this could be the biggest coming out party for Caleb Kufal here this week. That's a great point. And I heard our friend Mark Zona talk a little bit about that, that this might be the coming out party for Caleb Kufal like we have seen from a Jason Christie before, like we've seen from a Greg Hackney. Speaking of that, Greg Hackney's hooked up. Maybe a little bit. It's fat. You know, Dave, back to your point, you know, you've got Greg Hackney, Chris Saldane, and I don't mean to leave anyone out, but a Jason Christie, a Brandon Cobb, who just put some beat down on some people before also. But I mean, it's not like uh, you don't have some hammers in the top 10. Saldane's hooked up. Yeah. Yeah. That one ate it, man. No, it's a large mouth. Oh, Cole. Look how fat that one is, man. They do, you know. All this is happening, Davey, and, and I believe he with Crocs on. <laughs> Funny you said that. I noticed that this morning. That just to me just shows how calm. He is, and how it's like it's another day on the water. I don't, I, I know for a fact that I wouldn't have been a relaxed or felt comfortable in Crocs on the final day of my first uh, chance to, serious, serious chance. I guess you got a chance to win every event, but when you got an 11 pound lead going in the last day, uh, he had more than just a chance. But yeah, he just looks like he's out there enjoying the day. What a beautiful day it is, slick calm. Not the day that Chris Aldane wanted uh, to help the offshore bite. Ain't no way I'll get that joker in. I don't think there's nothing to him. Oh, he looks pretty long. Unfortunately, he'll help. Yep. I think. What's Slogan doing some long distance punching? I don't see him pitch out quite that far very often. Just trying to get to maybe some parts of the mat that haven't been fished here this week. A lot of people are going to want to compare what's happening here to Patrick oh God, Walters, to two you know, them. last year. And what really stands out to me, I mean, that is totally different. I mean, he yes. was doing something different. He, he was, it stood out. It was clear what was different. What he is doing is exactly what we're seeing every angler for exactly. the most part do, just doing it better.
Wes Logan, Luke Palmer, Greg Hackney. I mean, they're another Oklahoma style. It looks like they're all doing the same thing, keeper. but the one thing that jumps out every time when they set the hook, they it's swing in a two pounder or a three pounder, and Caleb swinging in fours and fives. And on day one, you know, he had well over a five pound average. Over to Jason Christie, who I often say is one of the most feared men in professional fishing, but it just doesn't seem right today for no. some reason. <laughs> you know, and it would take a miracle for Jason Christie to win this event, but here he is hooked up. I'll continue this in just a second. Let's see what he's got. I just felt that. And I thought, ooh, yeah, because um, I was behind that mat. But yeah, I don't know. If, I don't think it's, I don't think they're spawning. I just think that they're just swimming around there. And one that hasn't swam by swims by and is like, hey, Bill, there's a perch right there shaking, and you ain't bit it. So I'm going to bite it. So I think Jason is probably just okay with have, making the best of what he found in practice. Said he didn't have a good practice, and sometimes you're making a top 10 and you're comfortable with it. Well, Davey, what we got here is a good old fashioned slop knocker, a barn burner. It's gonna be right down to the wire, as they say in just about every sport there is out there. I don't know right now. I'm just wondering what I'm gonna say on the weigh-in stage this afternoon, because this is unheard of. Caleb Kufal has conquered Lake Gunnersville this week. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Big bass, big stage, big dreams, and all of those look to be getting accomplished here this <laughs> afternoon in a big, big way in beautiful Scottsboro, Alabama. And as you see, as I've said all afternoon, that leaderboard looks fake. That is not something you see. Davey, you've seen just about everything there is to see in this game. How rare is yes. what we're seeing here this week? Well, it is, and you know, we, we've got to keep talking about it because it is something that is so unusual. And the, the lake, is, that, that's as much as anything. How many times have the Bassmasters been here at Gunnersville? How many times have the Leafs been here? You know, as much or more than any other place in this country. So these anglers are all familiar with the the areas and the the springs and the, the shale beds and the, all, all the different things. And it's just absolutely and we incredible. Didn't all we that year. We, we just got to see who's going to finish second, I guess. And I was making a long run, and I had one stretch of high drill that I was really fishing. And, uh, I eased up there to the bank and found a six plus and a, a five, almost like 10 foot apart on different beds. I was like, okay, I'm about to blow this. And they would stay on the bed. It wasn't like they was scared. And uh, spent an hour and a half on them the second or third day, I guess, third day, and couldn't ever get them to bite. And, uh, and not have a limit, and you're like, holy cow, you know, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta catch a limit to make it. And, uh, but I was, I was very fortunate there. And then final day, I had engine issues and stuff on the way down there and kind of lost my head. And uh, that was actually a dang blessing in the skies, really, because if I would have said, okay, motor's slowing me down, I ought to just go catch me some fish out of these canals while the tide's right coming out. And I'd have had a, if I'd have went and caught me eight or nine pounds of them, and then accidentally went up there and caught one of those other fish when the tide came in, I would have won it, you know. But I didn't, it wasn't my time, so. Yeah. And that's.
That's what I, I've got to learn to have a, to get me some uh, other fish. <laughs> Doesn't mean I never dreamed that the uh, wind wouldn't blow at all and that bite would die on me. But it did. 110% died. Yeah, so Dave, it's a very different gunner's feel right now because of water clarity. The water is a lot clearer than, than we normally see it here this time of year. A lot more vegetation. And when you look at those two things, you think, well, man, the offshore bite's going to be awesome because of the clear water and it's mid, you know, it's late May. It's past mid May. But it's just the, the lake, the, the, the cool spring and the lingering spring that we've had. It doesn't feel like that right now. <laughs> But the lingering spring has, has really thrown a lot of, or did throw a lot of these anglers a curve. And, and I saw something today. I moved around a little more this morning when I was out on the water. And from a distance, it looked like, wow, they're schooling on that flat. And I went over there. With, actually, and I went over just to see exactly what it was. And carp were spawning. And, and that I've never seen the carp spawn here this late. And the, when, when there's carp still spawning, and, I mean, they were getting after it. There's always bass on the bank. There, uh, you know the bluegill spawn is not over. You know there's still some shad spawn going on. But it, it amazed me that I still saw hundreds of carp just spawning as hard as they could go this morning. May, what, 21st or 2nd? I mean, it's just really incredible. And, you know, I keep saying, and anglers, I talked to Gerald Swindle yesterday, at the way, and he said, man, I found a couple places. They just got out there today, but I can't catch them. No wind, clear water, what we've been talking about all week. But with the limited amount of fish offshore and the conditions the last two days when more fish have moved offshore, it's just been really, really tough. I've never seen it be this late going along. A very different year indeed, but a guy that's had some success, as he always does, Jason Christie. And in the tournament preview, talking to Tommy, I. You know, there'll be some fish on the bed, but Jason Christie, a lot of his fish that he's caught are bedding fish. This is a good one. Five pounder swam off, and this one got it. You, you, he's moved from ninth place to fourth place. That's four or five points or so. You know, depends on where he ends up that he's gained on Seth Fighter today or just in the last few hours. Christy took a win earlier this year, his fourth Elite Series win and his sixth Bassmaster win. But let's have a look back at his Bassmaster career. And this is where it all started. This is where he became the most feared man. He came from behind, from deeper in the field than anybody ever did to win on Championship Sunday. And, and it, you know, it was it was astronomical, but man, that was his coming out party here in the Elite Series. He has not looked back. Yeah, Dave, I was in that event and I remember thinking, wow, how did he make that move that final? Because we've had some people come from 10th place since then, but that's, I guess that's the first one I remember just standing out that that he, you know, typically when you go out in the top 10 and you're 10th, you just want to gain a few points, make a little more money. But I remember that event and he, he didn't just, I mean, he hammered them and, and just, <laughs> he didn't just barely win. He won convincingly coming from 10th place. Yeah, and it was the, before that, it was the deepest anybody had ever come from was sixth place to take an elite series victory. So he came out of 10th. And it was the perfect storm for our production team. I mean, it literally was a phantom school of fish that, that rolls off eight, five bites, called one more fish the rest of the day. We didn't have a camera on it. It was like crime scenes reenactment. The Bassmaster show was very well awarded, I'm sure. Um, but, but it was a panic moment at the time. But as you can see, Christy, very versatile. Wins on St. Clair and now here in Sabine River. I mean, yes. Yeah, the, the, the St. Clair win to me was this eye-opening. 
Uh, because when he won in 2013, well, shows I heard yes. a lot of people that had fished against him and around him for his whole career said, oh, he's great with a spook type bait, a walking bait. That's what he does. But then he goes and wins a smallmouth tournament. And then he, this event, he had to, he had to, had to be one of his most precious wins and most memorable because he kept a spinner bait in his hand the entire time throwing a shallow visible cover. And I know that's what he loves to do. There's a reason that all these anglers have cameras now. All ten of them, every yes. single one of them. But but I will say that I believe that the team of David Lipke and Middleton and Mike McKinnis, they looked great in their tuxedos because they won an award for that show. I'm sure something, <laughs> uh, I don't know what exactly it was, but it was definitely an award, a, 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 a very special award. For Jilly. And again, to me, watching the way Christie's fishing, if Caleb Kufo was doing that with the spinning rod, a guy from Wisconsin doing something, you know what I mean? Like if he was standing out, it wouldn't make more sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> but but, but so, so here's what, what I really think is the case here, and I'm just speculating. But Jason Christie, and he mentioned fishing some deeper hydrilla. If Angler of the Year wasn't on his mind, he would be gambling more right now. Right. He, I think he's – Hanging on to the last little bit of these fish up shallow has kind of been going away from him, especially the last couple of days. But I think right now he's got AOI on his mind. If I can move up, you know, it, just a few hours ago he was in ninth. You know, if he can make five or six points today, that can mean everything when we come to the last event of the year. He learned all too well that Angler of the Year points are made up on days when you're on the water and your competitors are not. And that is a look at our Skeeter Boats Angler of the Year watch. On top of that, Seth Fighter, who is not competing today, and Jason Christie, with every spot he moves in, he whittles just a little bit away from Seth Fighter's incredible lead with just two events left to go. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. I'll tell you who never stops stopping. Our tournament leader. Unbelievable what he has accomplished here this week. But they're a great shot of Chris Saldane as he continues to charge up our Angler of the Year leaderboard. An important tournament for him, and you got to feel good about his shots especially going to Champlain, where he should do well, and the Thousand Islands area in Waddington, New York, uh, home of our original record crowd. Got beat just a few events ago down at the Sabine River, but let's go out on the river right now, or not the river, let's just, it's whatever he wants to call it. It's a lake, it's a river, it's his universe, really, and he has the cheat codes to this game, and Caleb Kufal is making, uh, not just our anglers, but Lake Gunnersville his playground. He certainly is. Didn't feel like a big bite, but not something, not something we've seen him do very much. Miss a fish. It could have been anything, though. We've seen some pan fish be caught flipping these mats already this week. We'll see. He's going to fish back in there. Didn't feel like he really wanted it. It was just a tap. Come on, hit it. Tell you, they're not cooperative today. <laughs> so one that one, and you're done. You know, Davey, in some of these blowout tournaments, I guess Timmy Horton started it, and then I know Justin Lucas did it. A few different people have decided to come back and order pizza. Caleb Kufal is proving to be the kid at the party that just eats all the pizza. I mean, everybody knew that kid that took more than their share, and that's exactly what he's doing this week. I, th I just think he's 
enjoying fishing. I mean, it's it's like there just happens to be a tournament that I'm going to probably win $100,000 this afternoon, but I'm having fun out here. I'm not going to go in until I have to. Pull the pole out of my hand. Oh, wait a second. He's going after it. After this fish. I know he's still. This fish only needs to be 29 pounds, baby. Oh, don't you cut off, buddy. No, he won't help. There he is. Oh, he's a, it's a he nice had a good one, mouth. but not quite 29 pounds. And he's short. He kind of reminds me of a, one of them Bassmaster commentators. Looking at that mouth. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, he's weird Whoa. looking. I have to check him out. So, <laughs> well, I'll use that mouth he speaks of and say, well, he, he might be able to cut the deficit to 20 pounds and four ounces with that fish, <laughs> Mr. Mouthy Hackney. It's pretty tough when he's out there, Davey, I'll tell you. He would never say that to any of our faces. I think he uh, was referring to Zola, personally. <laughs> I most likely. <laughs> they have a weird little thing, don't they, him and Zona? Oh, yeah. I really tried to... I, I took time and went, you know, spent five, ten minutes with Caleb away from the boat away from like at his truck this morning and had just a one-on-one -on -one conversation really tried to like dude you are leading this event put myself in his shoes and said you know how are you nervous like really like with with a big lead like that i would feel that there would be a certain amount of pressure because i get it mathematically it's so unlikely but in your head you'd always be thinking but i could be that guy yes and he really taught i mean he was not nervous at all said i was more nervous on day one than i am yeah. it, it's incredible that's what he told me but i did hear i i think when zona was maybe talking to him or or maybe it was you i was on the water and listening you know with my earpiece but he said something about not sleeping well last night the saying that i was nervous the first day because i didn't want to have a terrible tournament because i had a bad practice that's the only little crack i heard in his armor but then last night he said he didn't sleep well, but and I think it was exactly what you're saying. I don't want to be that guy that gets remembered of blowing an 11 pound lead. And he's certainly not going to be that guy. And I said, what emotion are you feeling? And he didn't say that he, it wasn't nerves. He said, I, I'm feeling anxious. Like, it's just kind of like, I just want to do, uh, let's just do it. And, and really, I think that also explains and we kind of joked about the coming back to the dock early thing but man he is out there doing what he is most comfortable doing and that is yep. fishing so um yeah for flipping setup I'm using a using a one ounce tungsten green pumpkin color um Zoom Z Hog. I'm using a 50 pound Power Pro braid and using a 7 4 heavy action St. Croix Abidex. And I'm using a Luz Magnesium for the reel. About to go into that a little bit, but it's certainly better coming from the fishermen themselves. Glad to hear them do that. And there, there's a morning. picture of the baits. Lost two in a row. Though I think those were the the only fish I've actually lost all week. I've missed plenty, but after getting them on, I've landed at pretty much every one. So I've been pretty clean, except for about five minutes worth this morning when I lost one that looked pretty decent, you know, probably a close to 
close to three pounder and then one I didn't really see. Um, didn't feel all that big. He's probably, I don't know, maybe a two and a half or something. But nothing that I think would help me right now, except for that almost three pounder. But it is what it is. I mean, for a tournament, so let's take a look at Caleb Kupal's day today. And I was out on the water with him this morning. And I was a little concerned talking to him yesterday. He wasn't sure if he was going back into this area with a, the deeper millfoil. A lot of these fish were coming from, let's say, three to six feet. And they'd been hammered by him and some other anglers. But, you know, I certainly wasn't going to say anything, but I'm like, I hope you continue your rotation. It's worked out magnificently. So he did. He went in there and put two keepers in a boat, uh, stayed in there a little bit longer than I expected him to, to be honest with you. Yeah, then he went boy. out to this area on the main river, the Woo, Miracle yes. Mile kind of general area, I guess. But this Ooh. area has been so good to him once the wind laid down. It was, it was an area that he had more confidence in because he had a bigger – the couple bites he had out here in practice were bigger, but not many bites. In the first two days, yes. the wind was blowing on this area. Boom. He had to have a trolling motor. He told me up on like 75, 80% just to be able to move around, which when you're in two or three feet of water in this thick vegetation, this clear water, it really spooks those fish. So I think he was able to, not, not intentionally, but kind of save this area for the last two days where the winds have laid down and it's been absolutely perfect. So. Obviously, with the lead that he's got, everything has worked out just perfect for him. Um, and I think one of his biggest assets this week that we've got to, you know, give him credit for, he's doing what he likes to do, what he feels comfortable doing, and he doesn't have 20 other thoughts in his mind. He's He's got basically two baits, two different rod, reel, line setups, and two – Two areas of the fish, and it's, you know, it was like it's going to happen or it's not. I'm not going to go out and start trying to fish the ledges. So everything has, has worked out just perfectly for him this week, including the weather. After a very tough practice when the weather was different than what we've had here in the event itself. I imagine leading a tournament since the first hour of competition will give a man the kind of confidence to, to stick to it, too. <laughs> sure, sure, but... Um, gosh, his practice, I mean, well, I'm sure you talked with him, too. His practice was was not good. I mean, the area that he started, he's had, like, he caught three two-pounders in there. Your starting spot after three full days of practice on Guntersville, you're going to start where you caught three-pounders? And you're hearing stories about guys that are on a shad spawn and can catch 20 in the first 30 minutes, you know? But he never chased that. He, you know, he likes to flip. One thing has stood out in this extended spring-like season that we've had here in the Elite Series this year. The most important thing when it comes to spring fishing, it, it, for this season anyways, is timing. We have yes. seen incredible things happen on literally community holes. Even if you go back to Lake Fork, what Lee Livesey did on Championship Sunday, that was a spot that a huge percentage of the field fishes. It's one of the most community holes. But it was all yep. in his timing, and, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Timing is, is always a big part of our sport. I agree with you a 1,000%, Dave. The other thing is you can't ever forget you're fishing for the five biggest bass. Yeah. I mean, I saw Drew Benton and David Mullins the first hour of the tournament catch. You know, Mullins probably caught 20 and Benton caught 15, and I was with them for an hour. But they were all, you know, they left there with 13 pounds. Kufal catches seven in the first hour, and he's got 19 pounds. You know, it's just you've got to understand it's not a numbers game. It is, but the number's low. The number's five. And, you know, it's hard not to want to go catch those fish every cast that are, you know, the shad spawn type fish that we saw so many of, especially the first two days. But a lot of those guys finished those first few hours catching 10 to 20 bass and had 12, 11 or 12 pounds. Is this a timing thing as far as the time of the year, like when we're hitting this, or are we seeing what some anglers have talked about is almost a bit of a transition for this body of water where, you know, for years you'd fish it like this, and then the, it seemed like it was all offshore all the time, and now that everyone's offshore, 
It seems like the shallows are becoming more important. I'm, I'm a firm believer that all of our lakes cycle. Yeah. I, we've, I've seen Gunnersville similar to this. It's been a while, but I've, I've seen the fishing better. I've seen the fish wor fishing worse. I've seen it where there's basically no vegetation. I've seen it with more vegetation than what we see right now. Um, but I think uh, these lakes, uh, they evolve and they cycle. And we're just seeing it in, in a different phase than we've seen the last few years. They evolve and they cycle, but that little bait right there has done an incredible amount of damage. Caleb Kufal has absolutely dominated this tournament since the first hour of day number one, our seventh stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series. And what we're seeing here this week has been unbelievable. Davey, I'm out of adjectives. I mean, I don't know what to say. I don't, <laughs> don't know what the way it's going to be like. It's going to be spectacular. It's going to be a moment you don't want to miss. You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Less than an hour's fishing time remaining on Championship Sunday here in the Bassmaster Elite Series at Lake Guntersville, the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite. And uh, man, oh man, it's been all about one guy. There's no question about that all day long. Caleb Kufal, second year man on the Bassmaster Elite Series, set the tone on day number one and just has never looked back, leaving the rest of the field sort of in a cloud of dust, so to speak. And what an admirable, admirable performance by this guy. Yeah, and really something to learn, you know, if you're a aspiring tournament fisherman, something to really learn from what transpired before this event. Caleb Kufal was, he was open about talking about it, said, man, I did not have that good of practice. I got a couple bites in two areas. Well, they turned out to be very, very special areas and really kind of watching how this whole thing has played out from his starting area, just around the corner from Goose Pond, little patch of mill foil that we got to see Matt Heron mining in 2019. Matt Heron was around there this time around and as well as Corey Johnston. But looking at his second spot right here up near BB Comer and so many of the locals, man, if you rewind to 10 years ago, that stretch from Goose Pond all the way to BB Comer was miles. It was a golf course of hydrilla and mill foil mixed. Well, that kind of has gone out the window really the last few years with a lot of the eelgrass choking out the hydrilla, choking out the mill foil. And whatever that matted grass is, I asked Hackney, I said, what's the name of that stuff? He said, heck man, I don't know. You know, it looks like little baby hyacinth mats. It's what they have to live under. It's really what they have to live under and he has mined it to perfection. And not having a lot coming into this tournament has proved it was absolutely a load for Caleb Kufal. Big turning point with day number three. Of course, he set the tone with the giant weight on day number one, but day number three started out as a slow day. And as you say, he made that move up to the Comer Bridge area up there. And in just minutes, basically, he turned the entire complexion of the tournament around. It's been basically uncatchable since then. Yep alternating between two different weights, a three quarter ounce weight in his starting area in the mill foil. Taking a look at earlier today, Zoom Z Hog soft plastic and that starting area, he did a little bit of work with a one ounce dirty jig yesterday. Then rotating up to a one ounce weight up in the mats up by BB Comer. And what's interesting is only using a one ounce, that, that stuff's not as thick as the traditional mats that we see, whether you're down in Florida a little bit later in the year in Alabama, able to get away with that one ounce. And you heard him say it, man, what's been great is I've, I've executed pretty flawlessly, except for a couple of fish that really would not even have helped him. Does it all so quietly, doesn't, doesn't talk a whole lot, doesn't seem to stress on a whole lot of things and not easily distracted either. When he's in his zone, doing what he does here, he is like a machine. There's the weights through that band. Yeah, I mean, that's the way to build. You start with a day that's 27 pounds and 10 ounces off, off for the second day, but man, he turned it on big time. 
day number three and check out day number four just uh, by the time he had a modest limit. It was over. How about a B&W trailer oh. hitch is live on the line with Brian New. Brian, man, what a great season. Man, you have, you, it wasn't for lack of trying that you weren't in that top ten today. Man, you scratched hard through the first three days of competition. Yeah, man, I had a, um, have a, I've had a pretty good year. Had a couple uh, bad events. We don't want to talk about that. Uh, we're over that hill. We're in a good mood now. We're going to try to keep it that way. This tournament here, man, uh, I didn't have a great practice. I had a couple little small schools, and, um, you know, I stumbled across another one the first day of the tournament, and things got pretty ugly there at the end yesterday. I had the opportunity to uh, make the cut. We didn't, you know, uh, had a few misfortunes. That's part of it. And uh, But let me tell you what, now that I can watch the coverage, it's, it, it's really amazing how fishing has evolved. Um, you know, four or five years ago, you would never see somebody want it. We in on a TVA like this time of year fishing shallow, and it looks like, you know, almost the whole top ten is doing it, you know, at least half of them. And uh, so it, it's unreal. I mean, things have changed. Not only, you know, the the fishing pressure has, has been a, definitely a big part of that, but uh, just the way the lake is, it's got so much grass now, there's not really a reason or as big of a reason the fish don't have to get out there, you know, on the ledges as much with as much grass as is on this. Hey, Brian, real quick, uh, you are a fan favorite here on Bassmaster Live, a favorite of all the production crew. Man, what the heck happened in Texas? Dial us in. What happened in Texas? <laughs> I thought we said we weren't going to talk about that. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I mean, Sabine. I promise you, I don't know. Um, Fork. I'm. I'm the worst bed fishing on the face. Bed fisherman on the face of this planet. But I've said it a few times this year. I take every negative and figure out a way to turn it into a positive. The only thing I could get going whatsoever at at Fork was, you know, bed fishing. In the first day of the tournament, I had 20 pounds. Um, I caught a 6-9 on my very first cast of that tournament, which was good. And I actually had a giant, like I lost to a 7-9 to nine pounder. That would have been a big help. Fast forward to day two, train wreck. I mean, crash, burn, go in the lake. I mean, it was all. It was. I, there's no answer. I, I don't have it. But um, that ne that's a huge negative. Here's the positive. Brian New feels like he might know how to catch a fish on the bed now. So, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I fished it, and I don't know if I've said this on any on any live or anything, but I fished a tournament at the St. John's last year, and I did terrible. But I found a couple shell bars. Without those shell bars that I from that big negative last year, I don't win there this year. So there's that negative and a major, huge positive. So I lost, you know, three or four grand. And I made a hundred. Well, Brian, let's stay on that subject right there, event. Brian, because Great. that's Plus. something we know you want to talk about. Take us through that tournament and what it's meant to you to win your first time out on the Elite Series. It means I get to feed my family for a few years um, and not have to worry about a lot. But uh, man, it's just other, yeah. you know, yeah, we, we all want to win. We want to be the best. We want to do the best we can. But at the end of the day, it's really about making a living and, and providing a good a good life for your family. So that's the number one goal. But the number two goal, you know, you want to be on top. You want to win. And, and to daggum do it on your first try, buddy, that's something special. <laughs> I don't – you can't put it into words. I've said it over and over. There's no words for it. Um, but it's – momentum is huge. Uh, confidence gave me a lot of confidence. I know I can win now. Uh and I did it. My first try. Very, very fortunate and blessed for that. Brian, doggone it. I want to talk to you about the northern swing. We are going to Lake Champlain, St. Lawrence River. I need Daddy to kind of dial us in the next two events here on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Oh, and oh, by the way, we got a little Bassmaster Classic here in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah. We're going to worry about those northern swings tournaments uh, later on. I take it one tournament at a time. We're going to the Bassmaster Classic. Uh, it don't get no bigger. I mean, yeah, I won my first Elite Series, and that's awesome. But, dude, this is the Bassmaster Classic. There's never been a tournament like it. There'll never be another tournament like it. Um, 
where I told you at the beginning of the year, my goal, number one, is to make a living. Number two is to win Angler of the Year and win the Bassmaster Classic. We done, uh, we, we got to blew the shot on the Angler of the Year, but <laughs> hey, we still got a shot at that Classic. I'm looking forward to it. Guaranteed some money. Um, I'm, you, you know, I don't, that's the cool thing about where we're going, Ray Roberts. I don't think a lot of these guys, I mean, there's definitely been some guys been there. Uh, but I don't think it's, you know, uh, okay, you know, everybody's got 300 waypoints that, you know, from history or buddies that just gave them to them in the past. And it's going to be um, who figures it out. It's always who figures it out that week. But it's going to be go out there, find the juice, figure out how to catch them on the juice, and get it done. And you're a Bassmaster Class champion. And it would be really cool, really, really cool for Brian New to be the 2021 Bassmaster Classic champion. Brian, I I'm going to ask you a question about that. What would it mean for Brian New to be the 2021 <laughs> Bassmaster Classic champion? I mean, I just told you I can't put in an Elite Series champion win into the into the words. I, I promise you I can't put that, but I tell you what, <laughs> my family will live good for several years if I do that. Um, I think we'll. I, if we do that, we might have made it. Well, Brian, my guy, I, I wish I'd known. That's my guy right there. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish I'd known when Zona and I jumped in the boat with you back at Hartwell those years ago. What what a guy you would turn oh out God. to be. That was fantastic. Had a fun time that day. I've been having fun watching you all year long. Brian New, leading a rookie of the year, Seagar rookie watch. There it is right there with Brian New on top. KJ Queen. Good battle between those two guys. Of course, uh, Brian New, I, all eyes on the classic right now, Mark Zona. I could talk to Brian New for hours on end, Tommy Sanders. Everyone could. Brian New and more to come from Gunnersville. <laughs> You're watching live coverage of the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville, sponsored by TH Marine. Oh, the clock is ticking, getting closer and closer to weigh-in time at the Berkeley Bassmaster Elite at Lake Gunnersville to wrap this thing up at one of the most storied lakes in all the world of fishing. And this is going to be one of the most unforgettable performances we have ever seen on Bassmaster Live and the Bassmaster Elite Series. Just a complete, complete domination. Uh, all right. Uh -oh. and how can you sleep through this, this event that we've got going on right here? It's been incredible. Absolutely. It's been going outside, outside. <laughs> hey, makes it all right. Wake is up. that Jim Sexton from Bassmaster.com right there? All right, Taking a load look, off. Looking at Bass Track, right? it looks like. Good shot. Boy, though. he has got a setup. Yeah, very, very nice. Double cooler. That could be any of them. Tom, I'm going to tell you, when we get to that Bassmaster Classic, Ray Roberts, we're going to spend a little time with that Brian New because I need to get up inside that head and really learn a little more because I'm going to tell you, one of the most intriguing individuals I have ever spoke to in my entire life off the water. Brandon Cobb from moments ago. Oh yeah. Look at that one waking up there. I feel like I'm red fishing. This one coming. <laughs> that was awesome. That one might help. I don't know. That was cool though. You see him come get it. Good stuff right there. You could tell cool. just how shallow they are. When you see them waking from the left from about oh, 10 feet away. Gosh. Wait, yeah, exactly. Boy, look out for the U-boat coming in from the left here. It's more Jaws than the actual Jaws movie with the music. Gosh, is that cool. <laughs> Cobb had to check and make sure he had it. Sometimes they just come flying and miss it. Good 
good upgrade for Brandon Cobb. Over to Luke Palmer, also having a good day. These fish must not read the manual, though. That was a big one for a second. Oh, yeah. My big hats off to all the Bassmaster camera crew this week. Captured some great image. Wow. There. He went big. But that was probably him. Cobb has caught the most fish today of anyone. Boy, not a big one, but they are, they are getting after it. Oh. That's back I line with Brandon it. Cobb. Take your eyes off this. All right. Yeah, I came back uh, in this little pocket. It's got some brim beds that are incredibly shallow. I mean, four to six inches. And uh, hoping some big ones will be on it. I don't think there's any big ones on it. There might be one somewhere in here, but catching them pretty good on a frog. They're just all around two pounders, caught one, two and a half. But it is, I mean, you can tell it's about 18 inches deep or so. And uh, it's pretty fun back here. We'll ride it out to a weigh and just catch some. <laughs> Even if we don't catch a big one, it's still fun. I'm going to tell you one thing about this guy. You're not going to catch him back at the dock with a 15-pound lead eating pizza today. I can no, 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 you. no, no. Caleb He's... Kufal absolutely still piling it on the rest of the top 10. I think he, more than anyone, wants to know how much he can put on this field today. He's having fun. But he has definitely made his way back to Goose Pond. He's right around the corner on his, it's been his starting area every morning of the event. Z, we were, you were ragging on me pretty hard about my lack of a fantasy team this week for Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. But I will mm -hmm. say for Mercury Drain the Lake, I'm coming for that Mark Zone fishing trip. I don't care if I can win it. If I get in the top five, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna come and make you take me fishing because I'm only four hundredth in the world right now. I am in only? the top. That's awesome, that really? is, I well, I mean, I'm I mean I'm 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 right there. Four hundredth. That's only a, a couple hundred points difference in I saw somebody post about that. This uh, maybe they use their hammers early, and then later when I we know. go to the classic and up north, you may gain. You all may gain some more, Ronnie. My compadres, your strategy picking picking some guys that are going to be factors at Ray Roberts, and they can't be able to, you won't be able to use them, and got to be strategic to fish with Mark Zona. Well, it's going to be a big time. We're going to the Raptors then. I took a one Mike McKinnis there three weeks ago on a very important business trip. Did he beat you? Did he have a larger smallmouth than you? He looked like he had a uh, nice one. He did. One. 
I saw the he photo. had it on and I messed it up at the side of the boat. I'm going to tell you what, he tuned me up for a few minutes. Tommy, he went full-blown Mark Seppi for a while. <laughs> went Chief Tozan on you, huh? <laughs> uh. They're still biting out there. Doesn't matter. This one's uh, pretty much been won by our leader, Caleb Kufal. But hey, what a, what a pleasure. The Berkeley Passmaster Elite at Lake Guntersville is sponsored by Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, and by. Berkeley. Passmaster Live, we just couldn't put out the lights on this show until we were absolutely sure that uh, right. Caleb right. Kufal is, is, you know, kind of locked in on that win here. So maybe we can get one. Oh, okay. Oh, here God. we go. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a call. Woo. <laughs> All right. What a, what a show. It's a good one. What I mean, a not show. Bad, but Biggest on. bag on three days of the event. Slow day. I think he just realized that he might have, he might have sealed that maybe yes. the pressure's off. Close. Woo. Get close. Boom is right. Four days of boom for Caleb Kufal. Some great other moments along the way from all our great anglers, especially the 10 who made it to Championship Sunday. Well, we made the comment early in this event, you're going to win on Guntersville. You're going to have to earn it. Caleb Kufal not only earned it, he absolutely destroyed the field this week. And Tommy Sanders, fair to say, one of the most dominant performances we have ever called on Bassmaster Live. Absolutely will be unforgettable. What a week on Guntersville. What a win for the second year man. Caleb Kufal. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time, June 11th, 12th, and 13th at the Bassmaster Classic.